It's been called the biggest night of hockey in Minnesota. Semifinal Friday night, the Lakeville North locker room. They have advanced to the semifinals for the first time in school history. A win tonight, and they could be making history tomorrow night in St. Paul playing for a state championship. They will be up against the Eden Prairie Eagles. They held on for dear life in their opener against Centennial, but this team plays hard for 51 minutes. Legends are made on semifinal Friday night. Sit back and relax. We've got four great teams, two terrific teams, and a bunch of fans who are ready for some hockey here in St. Paul. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the XL Energy Center. I'm Joe Schmidt, our opener tonight, the Eden Prairie Eagles against the Lakeville North Panthers, and it's going to be a dandy. And I'm joined by the hockey professor, Mike McGraw, and the hockey coach, Dave Palmquist. And, Mike, I want to start with you. Eden Prairie lost 7 to nothing to Lakeville North earlier this year. Any hangover at all going into this game tonight? I would say there would be a lot of hangover going into this game tonight. If I'm playing in this game and I got beat 7 to nothing, I'll tell you what. My competitive juices would just be flowing. I would want the chance to go out and prove to that team that I'm going to beat you one-on-one -on -one all night long, and I wasn't as bad as 7 to nothing. Dave Palmquist, Lakeville North in some uncharted territory. They're like a favorite in this field. A little bit unusual for a Section 1 team to be a favorite, but, you know, I've, I've been fortunate to coach in a few state tournaments as the favorite, and the pressure's on, the expectations are high, and you could see that's the kind of the way that Eden Prairie played yesterday. Their sticks were a little bit tight, but the big thing is they found out they found a way to win, and they did win. And now tonight I expect them to really roll. I think they're going to be a lot looser, feel a lot better about their game, and I, I expect a big game out of them tonight. Both these teams won close games to get the semifinal Friday night. We start off with Lakeville North against Roseville. Roseau. Oh, at Lakeville North, here's the best play of the tournament so far. Paling, paling to paling. But Ryan Paling made a great play on that by holding on to the puck and waiting and waiting for his older brother to be the slider down the slot late. And he fed a perfect pass to him. To Jack is the goal scorer of the Paling brothers so far. He put it away. So we go into overtime, and here's the game winner. Yeah, just a great play by Henry Annebeck off the faceoff. There was kind of a miscommunication maybe a little bit on who to tie up on that faceoff. All he needed was a little space, got a quick shot off, and there it sends Eden Prairie to the semifinals. So Eden Prairie is in. Here's Eden Prairie right here. They were up against Centennial. And they got off to a dream start last night, up 3-0. Mr. Sullivan was the Sullivan Brothers show early in the game. They scored. Often, they got up to that big lead, and then, as one of them said in the interview after, they coasted a little bit in the second and let Centennial back in. But what a play here. Luke Snuggler makes that little pass, comes up cross-ice to Mike Graham. Bang. That was the game, Joe. Michael Graham scores, and we've got two one-goal winners beating Centennial 4-3. to three. The Lakeville freshmen were a key in that game. And you get a big school like Lakeville North, and look at the freshmen are playing a big role. Well, a lot of talk about that top line with the Paling brothers, but you can see that there's so much more than that. They've got a lot of depth. They've got a, you know, a, a young team, but a lot of experience. They've got a, a very big pedigree. They've played a tough schedule, and these kids are winners. Oh, hold on, folks. This is Minnesota's version of Friday Night Lights. Eden Prairie taking the ice. The Frozen Four Double A Hockey Special Moments seem to happen every year on Friday night. So hold on, sit back, and watch. It on 45 TV. And to call a game of this nature, you need talent, knowledge, and experience. In the booth calling the game, the legendary Gary Thorne. And for the 50th year, when he first started this tournament, his hair was jet black. Now it's 50 shades of gray. Mr. Lou Nanny. Gentlemen, take it away. <laughs> Hope we can live up to all of that. We know we can do that at least as far as the hair is concerned. Lou, uh, we get a game here with the Lakeville North team that's uh, just red hot since they opened. They've gone through the season winning games and an Eden team that better, play better with each passing game. That's exactly right. Eden Prairie is a different team than when Lakeville North played them earlier. They had just gotten beat by Edina. They were down. They played an afternoon game the next day. They got beat 7 nothing by Lakeville North. You will not see that happen here tonight. Lakeville North has to be sharp, and for them to be sharp and win this game, the one thing they're going to have to have is good goaltending, and that's the key to the game tonight for Lakeville North. Jake Ottinger is going to get tested. He'll get tested a lot, and even though you got a great Lakeville North team, this kid's going to have to stand up to it. And the one guy that they're going to have to stop 
And I'll tell you, the coach from Lakeville North is making plans to stop him with three defensemen, Steve Spinner. Spinner's a 20-goal scorer. He's a horse out there. He's physical, he's fast, and he's got a tremendous shot. He's going to have to be shut down if Lakeville North wants to advance tonight. Lakeville North comes in, averaging five goals a game, the best of all eight teams here in the tournament. While Eden Prairie on the other side lives on D. Which one wins tonight? We've got a double header of semifinal Friday here at the XL Energy Center in the state of hockey. Number three, Eden Perry against number two, Lakeville North. And Mike McGraw, a very short turnaround for both of these teams who played a pretty grueling game. Both of them played a grueling game yesterday. Well, I think the, one of the things these teams do during the year is they play back to back to back at Christmas time. So the coaches get a feeling of what it's like. The kids get an understanding of what it's like to come back in short order. I don't think any of these teams tonight, any of the four are going to be in trouble because of that short turnaround time their competitive juices their adrenaline is going to keep them going at a high pace uh, Dave Palmquist when you're coaching a team in a state tournament with all the pressure on can you tell if the team is ready they've got the eye of the tiger or you can tell maybe they're a little nervous well you know I think you can sometimes but you know in this locker room right now the coaches are saying guys we're here at the state tournament this is our time uh, this is all out effort this isn't going to be this this you can't be average tonight you got to be great tonight and there's a difference and uh, they got to look at their uh, teammate next to them and say I'm holding you accountable, and I'm accountable, and we got to go out there and play like a champion. All right, well, let's take a look at how this uh, tournament has shaped up so far as we've gotten to the Frozen Four in Double A. And as you can see, gentlemen, the seeds went pretty well as expected, except Egan knocked off the Loopies. Well, that was a toss-up, in my opinion. Egan, you could have very well been ranked number four, but they, in general, they have it all right. This is going to be a good game tonight. The second one's going to be good. We were blessed to have two and three play in this game. You know, Eden Prairie may be a little bit of an underdog, but yet remember, they beat a very good Benilde St. Margaret team in double overtime to get here. Yeah. Well, so we, we often forget that they've really basically almost played another state tournament coming through their section. So they've got the experience. they got the coaching staff. They've been there before. They've got a couple high-end skilled players going Division One hockey. They'll be ready to play tonight. Yeah, I will tell you, that is a tough section. It's almost like winning a state tournament itself getting through there, isn't it? It certainly it is. is. Yeah, and, and talk a little bit about right now, before you come out on that ice, it, do the last words a coach say mean anything or is it just you just want to make sure they're in the right mindset i you hope they're in the right mindset and i don't think there's a lot of coach can say just before they come out on the ice you've already talked to them and as david alluded to you can't be average tonight you have to be great and you have to convince your kids that that's the way it has to be and greatness is in my opinion is making the average play time and again without flawlessly never making a mistake on that little pass don't try to make the big heroic play just make the little one and you'll win as a team i ran into mike grant who is the athletic director and of course yeah. the very successful football coach at eden prairie and i said are your guys ready and he said if they play as a team and that's sometimes what you have to worry about when a team gets here that the seniors and some of the stars don't try to do too much well that's exactly right and you know the big thing is that you tell your team is you're going to be playing for 51 minutes for 51 minutes it's not going to go our way we're going to deal with some adversity along the way how are we going to deal with going on the penalty kill or being down by a goal and it's just real important that they stay sharp that they stick together and play as a team well there are some butterflies in the belly as both teams take the ice here at the x as we get ready we've got two semi-final games coming up after this one edina and egan and i tell you what if you're sitting in front of the couch watching 45 tv Pop some popcorn. You know, just just sit back and relax. This will be a great night. I think you really are going to be entertained. You're going to see two high-powered teams offensively. You're going to see some of the state's top individual talent in these games, and you're going to see some very good underclassmen in this game also. You know, the other thing that happens, Dave, is on this night, this seems to be the night the most memories are made. Absolutely. Yeah. Somebody's going to be a hero tonight, and we're going to remember his name for a long time. It's going to be fun to see who that is. Yeah, and it, over the years, it's been surprise players, and sometimes it's the star players who step up and take command at that point. Most of the time, it seems lately like it is the surprise player, someone you're really not expecting. And the reason for that is, is teams are so tight checking now on the good players that the good players with the reputations don't have any room to move. And it allows another, another player to step up and play well. Right, and as a head coach, you know, in the locker room, I often tell my players, don't wait for somebody else to make that big play. You go make that play. Don't wait for the Paley brothers to do it. Somebody else will step up and make that big play tonight. And then you want to make sure that your goalie is 
hot. <laughs> well, it's a minor little detail. detail. Right. As some I said last night, some say we should change the name from hockey to goalie, but you have to have that. It's like starting pitching in baseball or whatever other analogy you want. You have to have a goaltender that's playing well. Let's meet the stars of the game tonight. Let's go to PA announcer Jim Carroll. Jim? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 70th Annual Minnesota State High School Boys Hockey Tournament. Our first double-A semifinal features the champions of Section 6 with a record of 18, 8, and 3, the Eden Prairie Eagles. Against the champions of Section 1 with a record of 24, 4, and 1, the Lakeville North Panthers. Now let's meet the starting lineups. Starting in goal for Eden Prairie, senior number 31, Jake Gertis. On defense, junior number two, Brady Shue. His defensive partner, senior number four, Luke Snugger. And that wing, softball number 16, The right wing is senior number 10, Colton Schmidt. And the center is senior number 25, Steven Spinner. And the rest of the Eden Prairie Eagles. The assistant coaches are Paul Ranheim and Steve Olinger. Head coaches Lee Smith, the Eden Prairie Eagles. Now let's meet the starting lineup for the Lakeville North Panthers. Starting in goal, freshman number 29, Jake Ottinger. On defense, junior number 17, Angelo Altavilla. His defensive partner, junior number 20, Jack McNeely. The left wing is junior number seven, Nick Paling. The right wing is junior number three, Jack Paling. And the center is freshman number four, Ryan Paling. And the rest of the Lakeville North Panthers. Their assistant coaches are Jake Innebach and Jake Taylor. Head coach is Trent Eigner. Lakeville North Panthers. Here are tonight's game officials on the lines, Neil Missling and Dustin Martin. Your referees are Bill Danielson and Tony Lansett. At this time, we ask you to please rise, please remove your caps, and join the Lakeville North Band under the direction of Nathan Arp, the playing of our national anthem. For the latest on this game tonight, let's go ringside with Tori Holt. Tori? Well, thank you very much, Joe. Uh, talking about Lakeville North defenseman Jack Sadick. Well, he has some pretty good bloodlines in his family. His dad in the 1980s was a quarterback 
for the Minnesota Golden Gopher football team, as was his grandfather, Bob, who was an All-American quarterback. Well, Bob sadly passed away this past summer. Brett told me Jack took it pretty hard and really has wished his grandfather was here to see this incredible season unfold. And Gary Brett also told me that Jack writes his grandfather's nickname, Pops, on his sticks when he goes out and plays to keep that memory alive. So everybody really playing for something here. Let's take a look at our starting goaltenders. They're brought to you by Catholic United Financial Life Insurance Annuities and Retirement Products. How about this record for a freshman six foot three goaltender? You look at that save percentage, it's unbelievable. In the net for Eden Perry, Jake Curtis again, and he's gonna have to be sharp tonight against this high-powered Lakeville North attack. Lakeville North coming in, uh, seated number two in the tournament. Eden Prairie number three, and we are underway. One of these teams will get to play in the finals tomorrow night. That's what's at stake in this game. Lakeville North, a higher seed in white. They are the home team. Eden Prairie in the dark. It'll be Shue out there on defense. It'll be dumped around to the far side boards. Over to play it was Graham. Moved up through center ice by Poling. This is the starting line out there for the three palings and an early save made by Gerties. Let's take a look at our game plan brought to you by Education Minnesota. 70,000 educators working together to improve education and help students succeed. Eden Perry's going to have to gap up. Not much room between his defense and forwards tonight so that they can't be cracked by that Lakeville team. Better back check in their part. Puck control offensive zone time for Lakeville. They want to keep that puck in the offensive zone and keep control as long as they want, can, can. And they have to shoot the puck more than they did last night. And I think they're going to, looking at that first play, when Jack Paling just let fly coming off that wing. Face off will be won by Eden Perry and moved out down the left side and into the zone. Spinner, that's the one they've got to watch, and they will. Spinner number 25 is their leader offensively on the ice, and if he's on, it's big for their offense. Played back by Shu. Shu will have to drop it to Snuggerud a little deeper. Starting line out there for them. Shu and Snuggerud on D. Spinner, Graham, and Schmidt will be up front. First line change coming up. Bounces up in the air. Spinner trying to back it up and get it to Graham, who was on the far side. We couldn't do it. Both teams looking to get a line change down here. Through center it comes. Bailing's got it. He'll hold it up, waiting for some help. Gets it over in the far side to his brother. Gets knocked into the corner to Max Johnson, just coming out on the ice. Johnson wheels it up the near side from the point. Didn't want to take the shot. Deflected away. Going to complete a line change here. And Legville had to clear the zone anyway. Dangerous pass in front of the net. Now both teams get their line changes completed. Long first shift in the quarterfinal games for Lakeville. They used only 12 skaters. Eden Prairie put 14 out on the ice, so they certainly did not go deep on the bench in the quarterfinal and probably aren't going to do that here. You're right. When you look at it, Gary, the Paling seemed like they were on the ice every second shift in that first game. And will be again here as they are the leading scorers on this team on the first line. Dump back in behind the net. Pretty good forechecking by Lakeville early on here. They'll come to the middle. Parrish, the intended, got away from him all the way into the zone. Dumped around as the line change is completed again. Played by Ennebeck. Ennebeck trying to move it out of the zone. Comes back to the near side boards. Jake Ottinger, the goaltender, watching as the centering pass got blocked behind the net. Played by Matt Arnold. Arnold could not move it out. Pretty good hold in right here to keep it in the zone. Zedek came over to get it. He cannot move it out of there. Clay's held it in, and finally they'll just ice the puck to take the pressure off. Good work by Eden Prairie. Good forecheck by Eden Prairie. At the same time, he would have thought that Lakeville would be a little sharper moving that puck. Their passes weren't very good, and they weren't real good beating people down low. They were losing some battles along the boards as well. They're going to have to be better in their own defensive zone tonight, or they're going to give them quality chances to Eden Prairie. And the faceoff will come to the right side of Ottinger, deep into the circle there was Cole Lawrence. They dropped the puck anyway. Lawrence was almost on the faceoff dot. Cleared back out to center. And into the zone. Snuggaroo dumped it back in. We'll see a lot of this starting D out there tonight with Brady Shue and Snuggaroo for Eden Prairie. Almost intercepted. That's the man they don't want touching the puck. Steven Spinner, who got a piece of that and almost got a shot off it. Cleared back in behind the net. Shue going back to get it. Round the boards and out the center. Well, you're going to see Eden Prairie move that puck quickly out of their zone. So I would expect Lakeville to use their body more than they have thus far. They're not 
physical at all thus far, and you would think that they'd want to do some of that to slow the defense from Eden Perry down a bit. Right back in by Jack Paling. Shot's going to go wide all the way over to Nick. Paling will leave it back in behind the net. Had help from Ryan Paling, number four, who was down there. Pushed up along the far side to Graham, who couldn't get it out of the zone. Held in at the point. Alta Villa all the way around the boards. Over to get it. Jack Paling. Paling pinned up on the wall. Puck came free and back out to center. Pretty tight checking early on. Not a lot of room. Good pace to start the game here in the opening minutes. And you could expect McNeely, Altavilla, and or Sadik on the ice every time Spinner's out there. He wants to keep the coach of Lakeville North, Wagner, wants to keep one of the big defensemen out against Spinner. So they're matching it up, and there's a steal and a shot. The save made and deflected wide. Nice play by Hazlitt, who got that one in the middle. Back down low and through a screen. Scores! On the board with a shot through a screen is Hazlitt. He had the first chance. He gets the second one. There was some room there for Sadik on the follow-up. And a 1-0 lead for Lakeville North. Well, Sadik uh, had the opportunity to get that rebound of Hazlitt. He took the shot from the blue line. It seemed like the goalie was green. And with a bullet from Sadik, I don't think it was deflected. You see the puck turned over here. Hazlitt's going to get the one shot. That puck's going to come all the way back out to Sadik. And Sadik's going to let fly with a bullet right here. It looks to me right through a screen. I don't think Gertie saw it. And that's a 1-0 lead for Lakeville North. A turnover on the attempt to get it out of the zone. And it will cost them a goal on the second shot of the game. The second put up by Lakeville. And they've got the 1-0 lead as Sadik picks up the goal. So they get the early jump in this game. Remember, these teams are meeting for the second time. Lakeville had a 7-0 win over Eden Prairie back in December. And so the more that Lakeville could put in the net, more pressure they can put on, the more Eden Prairie's going to remember that game. That shot's going to be directed wide all the way around the boards near side, held in Aguilar. That'll be stolen by Max Johnson. Johnson drops it off. As they're trying to move it in, he's going to go to the bench on the line change. Fire side played by Sullivan. Sullivan just cleared it out to center. His line change is important as the coaches do want these matchups on lines and especially, uh, especially the defensive pairings. Well, take a look. Here's the first one. Don't clear the zone, and it costs you. Right back into the middle, and look at the bodies in front. That's why there was no chance for Jay Gertis to see that. one nothing lead, Lakeville. Lakeville North favored in this game. They put the heat on early here, as they did in that regular season meeting. And whenever you play North, you know that you've got to worry about the palings. Jack with three goals and his brother Nick with three assists. Ottinger, a great game. He had 18 saves. He's a good one in the nets for Lakeville North. Yeah, Jake Ottinger in the game here in the semifinal. Oh, right now for Eden Prairie, they're going to want to answer. Played him behind the net by Clays. He drops it. Neater, Neater, Clays on the tic tac. Can't be controlled. Sadie got it and we'll move it up. Hyden got it out of the zone. Hyden will send it in. There's Shu again out there. Shu and Snuggerud will spend a lot of time on the ice tonight as that number one defensive pairing for Eden Prairie. They want them out there to take on the best offensive line that Lakeville's going to throw out. To the middle they come. It's a two-on-two. Two. Trying to move it in for a shot. Bad angle. Got the shot off. Save made. Good play by Cole Lawrence to find a little room there. Didn't have much of an angle, and the short side was held by Ottinger. Cleared into the zone deep, and that'll be an icing call. Let's check in with Tori. Hey, Gary, you noticed uh, Jack Sadick right after he scored that goal as we let off. He was playing each game for his grandfather. He pointed up at heaven right after he scored that goal. He came over to the bench. He got one for his grandfather. A little extra drive for Jack Sadick, the junior. I remember his daddy was in school around the time I was, quarterback in the goal for football team there. Good, good man. And great to be remembered by his grandson. Back in behind the net, Spinner. Spinner's going to be muscled away. Alta Vila put some pretty good lumber on him right there. Spinner will work off the board. Shot, score! And they tie it up with their second shot. There's the man they got to hold down. 
and they couldn't do it on his first chance. And he can shoot the puck. Steven Spinner's got a rocket for a wrist shot. Comes off the boards. It seemed to handicap Ottinger. I am not so certain he didn't get screened on the shot. But just because of the forecheck, a turnover, and Spinner tying his game up. Watch him on the boards right there. He's going to get a little dump pass there and let fly with that shot. It did look like it was screened. Graham with a nice little pass to Spinner. Spinner ties the game up with a rocket up high. Right under the crossbar, and Eden Prairie back in this hockey game. And they got to feel good about that after not scoring in the first game 7-0. Yeah. This changes the complexion and their attitude completely. Another one of the Mr. Hockey finalists going to Nebraska Omaha. And Spinner, the senior, a big goal and gets this game tied up at one apiece on their second shot. Goal will come at 546. Graham will pick up one of the assists, and Mark Sullivan, who's having a good tournament, will get the other. It'll be held in by Shue momentarily, lost it to the near side. You'll see this Lakeville team just charging to the net as they did in the first game. Shot score! Wide open in the middle! And it is a 2-1 game just like that. And again, it's the air and pass that creates the opportunity for Alta Villa. Another absolutely great backhand pass, though, from Paling to get that over to Alta Villa. He shoots a bullet down low quickly, puts Lakeville North back up. Look at this right here. Paling, just a nice little dump backhand pass there from Ryan Paling. And there's Alta Villa with a rocket. Maybe that was Jack, but <laughs> those Paling boys, they do it all the time. And Alta Villa with a great slap shot. So the scoring coming quick in this one. We've had only a total of five shots in the game combined, and we've already got three goals up on the board. That one coming at 6-10. Alta Villa picking up his tenth of the season and his first of the tournament. Alta Villa is going to go off to play baseball at Nebraska. They see him score a few more of those. He might want to change the rules. Yeah, right. <laughs> and that will go to center. Some real offense coming up here two, against two very good goaltenders. And that will be an icing call. Well, you know, anytime you get scored on and come right back with a goal, Gary, that gives you a lot of... A lot of confidence, a much better feeling. You have to answer the call, and Lakeville North has done this all year long. They have been a solid team throughout. They just seem to bounce back from adversity very quickly, and they did it again here tonight early in this game. They've made a habit of winning. They are 22-1-1 one one since a 2-3 and three start. They got their game turned around early and got it turned on for the long run and have just played magnificent hockey through the greater part of their schedule. You're looking at Coach Trent Eggener on the right and on the, <laughs> and next to him, Ennebeck, whose son last night got the winning goal. They're very confident. They feel poised. They feel good about their team. And anytime their team can respond like that, that gives them a lot of hope that they can win this hockey game. Jack Keeley had the opportunity, but he shot the puck wide. Third around to the half boards on the near side. A good job by Eden Prairie trying to hold it in. It'll just squirt back out to center ice. Sent right back in Aguilar. They do clear the zone into the corner. Argett Singer. Argett Singer threw it back to the point. Aguilar sends it back in. Knocked away out of the zone. Hazlitt got it out of there. Again, it's cleared on the dump in. Good play by Eden Prairie to hold the zone for a while, but they never got any shots out of it. Max Johnson gets stood up as he tried to skate back into the zone. Snuggerud takes it around the net. Snuggerud, another one of the finalists for Mr. Hockey here in Minnesota. He'll lug from end to end. Center! Shot! And deflected up in the air and wide. Pretty good chance right on the doorstep that time. On the end, end rush. Now... Lakeville wants to get a line change here, so they'll leave the puck. Got poke checked away from Max Johnson. They will get the line change completed. That'll be dumped in wide of the net by Sullivan. Annabeck took a shot under the chin going off there, too. I think he's okay, but he was uh, shaken up a little right in front of the bench. Yes, Spinner again. Shot. Score! Oh, no! We thought we'd see some D in this game, and we may yet, but right now what we're seeing are a couple of clubs that are playing some offensive hockey. Well, the coach of Lakeville says he's going to have one of the big three defensemen out against him all the time, which is really good. He didn't want to match lines. But the way Spinner's going and shooting that puck, 
maybe he's going to have to start thinking putting somebody on spinner not to give him that much room because when he has room coming off the boards like he had there he comes off the boards right here he gets bullet shot right from the spot this kid is dangerous and they have to pay attention to him right now because he's on fire here tonight and yeah, boy did he roof that one there's no way you make a save on that his 22nd goal of the season second here in the game coming at 751 so the one player Lakeville had their most concerns with coming into the game is showing why and uh, getting it done so we're back to a 2-2 game as these teams have scored four goals on a combined six shots here in the first period Paling brought it into the zone Ryan Paling uh, they were offside and the faceoff will be at center it's why you play games in sports you just never know the numbers tell you one thing but when you get out on the ice the action they tell you something else that's what's tied at 2-2 Got 11 on those <laughs> starts. <laughs> he grows an injury every time somebody scores a goal. Going to have to bring the barber in for this game. 8.52 left to go here in the first period in what uh, has opened up as a shootout game. I'm not sure either team rounded that. Brocked in by uh, Snuggerud. He's going to be offside. And maybe call made behind the play here. Nope, they're going to bring it back out to center. Well, I think that, I really think that Lakeville North is going to have to start taking bodies sometime. They're doing a lot of reaching for pucks. You know, when you got an offensive team, many times you, you do get by with it. You've got so much offensive skill. But when you play another team with skill, especially puck handling skill, you have to eliminate the man, and they're going to have to start doing that tonight. Chew trying to dump that one in. Couldn't go anywhere. Snuggerud, he'll send it off the dasher and back in behind the net. Zadek uh, is back, trying to play it, lost it. The one part of the game where some defense has shown up has been the forechecking of Eden Prairie at times. They've been able to hold the puck in the zone but not convert that into offensive chances. Good hit on the far side and a whistle. Eden Prairie will hit you and they're going to hit you when you get the puck so you have to expect that. You have to many times take a hit to make a play and that's part of the game and that's the kind of thing that Eden Prairie is accustomed to doing. That's what they've done all year long and you can expect them to do it here tonight. Good body check right there. And that's only Keeley. He's uh, a youngster. He knows enough to take the body and knocks the helmet right off. Jack Keeley, who plays a very tough physical game generally, and you see him doing that here in this semifinal game. That is sent in by Mark Sullivan. Goes in behind the net. They get spinning right back out there. Comes back to Sullivan. Shot on. That will be gloved, and uh, Ottinger will hang on to that one, not wanting to give up a rebound. You will see Lakeville North play better when they start winning pucks in their own zone. When they start taking the man in the boards, and many times when they go in to fight for pucks, come up with the pucks. Thus far, Eden Perry's been much more proficient at it. On the draw to the right of Ottinger, leading faceoff man, Steven Spinner was 15 out of 22 in faceoffs in the quarterfinal game. That one he won, but it ends up going all the way down ice. Puck checked away. Opportunity Lakeville on a turnover, but they can't control it. Trying to headman the puck up ice as Schmidt was open at the blue line. Schmidt in, Schmidt shot. That's deflected in skates, played behind the net. And again, the forechecking game moving in is Sadik who helped create the turnover there. Can't get the puck out of the end, though. Bailing has to go near side. Two four checkers moving up, meeting them along that blue line as well as the D steps up, trying to prevent Lakeville from having any passing chances in the offensive end. And, and actually, uh, Eden Prairie's done very well of meeting the play at the blue line, not allowing Lakeville to get in the zone that easily. Creating a couple of turnovers here as we get a little center ice play now with both teams maybe buckling down a little bit as far as the defense is concerned. That'll be sent in from center by Sadik, rebounded. Argett Singer. Argett Singer lost it behind the net. Royal battle going on down there. It'll be played to the point. Held in. Bump check put on by Aguilar. Aguilar is playing a physical shift on this one. He's had a couple of good shots back in behind the net. Now Snuggerud again. The defenseman who looks like a forward. Good behind the back pass that time. Sullivan got the opportunity. Jack Sullivan missed the net though. Cole Lawrence has got it. Back to Sullivan. Sullivan all the way up to the blue line. Lawrence gets pinned up, and with the line change going on, they didn't have anybody at the point. They'll get back on side, and the Eagles send it in. It'll be covered upside of the net. 
Well, Eden Prairie was always looking towards Spinner to give him leadership, and look at the way he's hustling and working. You can expect that guy to keep going. He's like the Energizer Bunny, and he can shoot the puck. What a great rocket shot off the boards there. Now watch this one from the dots. Another one. All the shots are going up and under that crossbar. Goaltender's big, but when you're down, you leave the upstairs open. And boy, he's been accurate hitting the upstairs twice. 6.04 to go, and this one tied at 2-2. A little roll in, and Jay Gerdes will hang on to it. Gary, if you'd have bet me that here we are, 6-1 to go in the period, and only seven shots on goal total from both teams, that would have been a re huge surprise. And to you say four th goals off that, even and a bigger four goals surprise. even bigger. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> that percentage is mind-boggling. And when you think of both these teams with the kind of offense they got and puck carrying and moving ability, you'd think there'd be more shots. Yep. That'll be rolled back into that high slot area. Good stick check from behind as Klotz was trying to get a shot off on it and didn't. Altavilla goes back in behind the net. Puck just rolled away from him. Matt Arnold came in to help out and get it back to him. Altavilla off the near side. Puck won't stay on his stick. Flips that one out to center. And backing up on it, Argut Singer had it, lost it. Centering pass just a little bit behind the breaking forward, Nick Paling. And it'll be turned back up by Eden Prairie. Both teams changing up again. Artzinger, that'll be shot in. They will complete the line change after the dump in. Moved up, Altavilla. Leaves it back. Through center, Palin. Palin into the zone. Bounce basket tied up. See three players on him. They're just surrounding that puck carry. Eden Prairie is, especially on that top scoring first line of Lakeville. This is what happens when you don't. Ailing shot. That goes off a stick up into the netting, and that will be whistled. So a good start. First of two of the semifinal games played here at the XL Energy Center. Right now we're tied at two. And our fan cam is brought to you by 45 TV. Another big sellout crowd on hand for these two semifinal double-A games tonight. And this game looks like it's going to be close all the way because there are not many opportunities on either side thus far. Even the goals that were scored, they were scored from a ways out. Two blue line shots for Lakeville North and two off the hash marks. And one for uh, Stephen Spinner for Eden Prairie. They came fast. Uh, first goal, 402. Sadik got it. Spinner answered at 546. 610. Altavilla's goal. Spinner again, 751. So quick ones here in the first period for both of these teams. There is Luke Snuggerud going back to get it. Snuggerud will turn the corner on it. He really rushes end to end a lot. He's a good stick handler and he's got great skates. Backhand shot. That's going to be blocked. Snuggerud. Complete distance of the ice on that one. Back in behind the net. Schmidt. Schmidt trying to center. Had Graham. Graham. Schmidt. Well, on the far side boards. Played back in behind the net. That's Clays. Clays gets tied up, knocked down as he centered it, taken out of the play. And a good check put on McNeely again. The good defensive play for Lakeville. And good back checking there by Eden Prairie. Intercepted. Altavilla shot. The glove save made by Jurtis on the turnover. You're going to see Luke Snugger will take this puck down the length of the ice. He goes around the corner, and the four checker got to take the body or cut him off from the net. He'll go right around the outside, come around the front of the net, and try and jam it in. Only to have the goaltender stand his ground there and make the save. A good rush, good effort there by Luke Snugger coming the length of the ice. Off the far side boards, Lawrence will play it out to center. Intercepted. Little chip to drop it back into the zone. Haslett out there. See the two four checkers moving up. Eden Prairie has forced a lot of errant passes at center ice with their coverage out there moving everybody up to meet the Lakeville skaters. On the far side moving into Sullivan. Jack Sullivan. Sullivan will try and turn it to the net. Shot score! Had the goaltender looking the other way as the rebound went to the near side instead of going around the net and it is a 3-2 lead for Eden Prairie and a great rebound by Jack Clays. 
Well, I'll tell you, Sullivan scored a lot last night, the two Sullivan brothers, and now this time Jack Sullivan takes it around the outside and uses a short side for a nice little pass to Clay's coming in from the slot area. And watch as he goes around. Everybody thinks he's going back. Nope, he just dumps it in front. And here comes Clay's drilling the play. Wide open net. And Eden Prairie going ahead 3-2 to two on a great rush by Jack Sullivan, who's having quite a tournament thus far. He is playing really well. And you see Ottinger was looking the other way. He thought that puck had come around with the skater to the other side of the net. You know, Gary, the people that started doing that little play were the Europeans. They used to do it all the time. They always did that. The Russians did that. The Swedes did that. That was their favorite play. Well, it works right there. And Eden Prairie's got a 3-2 lead in the game. As the offenses continue to produce here. Chu dumped it ahead. Third off the dasher and intercepted. Lego will get it back. Near side McNeely. McNeely on the wide side pass. Paling. Paling got driven back into his own end. That was Jack Keeley doing a nice job defensively. And in on the offside is Paling for the whistle. Paling and one Paling. You, you see in the corner there, the two Paling boys went after uh, Snuggerud because Jack Paling just came over to take care of Ryan because Ryan was just getting elbowed by Luke as uh, Nick was the one that had the puck. And Ryan just got over a little quicker. And there's the older brother right there from Ryan's older brother. That's Jack. And he made certain no one fool around with my brother. <laughs> And the last goal by Clays, his seventh of the year, first of the tournament. Jack Sullivan will pick up the assists on it at 13:34 for the go-ahead goal for the moment. Those go-ahead goals have not stood up for very long here in this first period. No, they haven't. Here we are with five goals on nine shots. Who'd have thought? Exactly. Just amazing. You got uh, Eden Prairie, the goals against on the year, 2.64 against a Lakeville team that on the year, their goals against is 1.9. Yeah. And they've given up three in the first period here. Great. Wow. That one is a very big surprise. On the turnover, backhand chance is going to go wide. Good effort by Michael Graham that time. Centered again, trying to get a forehand shot. And the save made. And a hard shot. Ottinger had to get it as Graham got a second chance. Oh, what a, what a good shot there. Eden Prairie is coming up with a lot of turnovers in the offensive zone. You take a look there. Three goals allowed in the first period here tonight. In the previous four games, you've only allowed three goals. That's that's something. You would never have expected Lakeville North to give up three goals this quickly in this period. Nope. And the fact is that Eden Prairie's really doing a good job of forechecking. They're getting turnovers. They're coming up with loose pucks. They're winning battles on the boards. And when you got zone control and puck control in the offensive zone, that's what Lakeville North wanted to do tonight. But Eden Prairie's done it thus far. And a 3-2 lead with 2.20 left to go here in the first period. It has been a penalty-free first period with some pretty good hits, but some real good action as both teams have spent their time flying around the ice here in this five-goal first. And you see the teammates of Spinner always congratulating him coming off. He's the leader of that hockey club. And how he goes, they go, and he's going tonight. Parrish on the faceoff against Matt Arnold. Arnold won it, cleared around the boards, but not out. Good holding again. Keeley got over there to shut it down. Target singer, Keeley, along the boards for Eden Prairie. Battling against them, Sadik reaching in. Pretty good war right there as that puck's just moved along the wall, finally flipped up, and it ends up going over the glass for a whistle. We want to just show the makeover from year 2013 when they were here last year, 11-16-1. This year, 24-4-1. And, and this year, they were ranked number two in the state and seeded number two in this tournament. But right now, they got their hands full with the number three seed, Eden Prairie. They won the sectionals, giving up only two goals. Outscoring opponents, 24-2. to two. See, there's just an instance right there. Every puck that Lakeville North is getting out of the zone, it's not a completed pass. It's a dump out. They're not coming out with any kind of flow. They have no control of the puck. Got to make these passes on the stick like that. A little too far. Part of that, the Eden Prairie forechecking game and back checking, for that matter, yeah. that's being played out there. They're preventing anybody from getting free. Any opportunity to put the puck on somebody else's stick brought in onside. 
It just goes wide. Heslett was cutting to the net, couldn't get to it. Lawrence trying to play it out of the zone. Couldn't move it up by the point, pinned up. Lawrence 37, added up against the wall. Puck batted again up in the air, just won't sit for anybody. It'll be held in by Lakeville, though. Now knocked down again. Lakeville may get an opportunity out of this. Play behind the net by Shu. And Shu on the D to D with a minute left to go. We'll move it up the wall and out of the zone. Little chip pass comes to center on the spin around Cole. Cole couldn't line it up for a shot. And Lakeville's got it. And we got a body check that time for Mennebeck, and that's the first defensive body check we've seen in the neutral zone by Lakeville, and that's something they got to start doing more of. That's Spinner out there, number 25, looking for one final chance here to put another one up. Here comes Nick Paling down the ice. Nick Paling, Ryan behind him. Instead, he sends it around the boards. It comes up the half wall. Paling able to steal it, hold it in. Good coverage, backing up Snugger. It wouldn't let anybody get open in front of that net. Down to 17 to go here in the period. Tip pass, gut block, shoe, Snuggerud. Snuggerud looking for Spinner on the near side, but can't hit him. Tried to block the outlet pass, couldn't get to it. And Steven Spinner with a strong first period will take this Eden Prairie team in with a 3-2 lead. And Lakeville North is not going to be happy not containing this man right there, Steven Spinner. Lakeville North only four shots on net, two goals, trailing 3-2. to two. They did not play their game in that first period. They are going to have to go up there and say, we're only one goal down, we can regroup, we got to do better. On the other side, Eden Prairie's got to be very, very happy with what Coach Lee Smith has seen. They're forechecking well, they're moving the puck well, they've been aggressive, they've been on the outside of all the checks, never on the inside. And so he's got to just be saying, I knew we could do this kind of thing. Let's hear from the coach, Dory. Coach, five goals in that first period of play. How comfortable are you with that type of game? Uh, did, it didn't do us well the first time we played. We gave up seven, so we're going to have to button down. You know, you're doing a nice job putting a lot of pressure on your on your D, on their D. What are you seeing that's working for you? Well, I just think our guys are really moving their feet. They're finishing their checks. We're, uh, we're in good positions. You know, we're playing good hockey. We, we had two bad mistakes and most of them went in the net so we just got to clean it up a little bit kids seem like they were pretty happy heading off into the locker room what will the chatter be like uh, it should be good but there's a long game they got a lot of weapons we just got to keep playing always appreciate your time thank you all right that's lee smith all right thanks very much players may be saying to themselves the same thing we're saying up here wow did you see that yeah <laughs> only 10 total shots on eden prairie six four the advantage there and three to the lead and I don't think anybody thought it was going to look like this. No, five goals in the first period on ten shots. Not in your wildest dreams, especially three against Lakeville North's goaltender, who is an exceptional kid. This is probably, well, we showed a few. They've only given up three in the last three games. To give up three in one period, it's got to be disturbing to them. To the Hang with the semifinal. This is the first of two semifinals to set up the championship game for tomorrow night. 3-2, Eden Prairie. Coming up here from the XL Energy Center. Lakeville North only gives up an average of 1.9 goals a game. They've given up three so far. Highlights coming up next from the X. And the hockey coach. And we've had a lot of fireworks in this one so far. It started a lot faster than I thought it was going to start. I never would have thought we'd have five goals in a period. Maybe five for all three periods. A great start to a, t a great semifinal game. That 7 nothing game right now means nothing to either team. Absolutely. It doesn't mean a thing. And I'm sure uh, Lakeville North, you know, they got off at the start. They wanted a quick goal. But, boy, as Eden Prairie responded, really great job by Lee Smith's team. Yeah, I think this is going to be an exciting finish to this one. We've got a lot of highlights to show you, so we better get to them. The scoring started early, and it started often. Lakeville North got on the board. Jack Sadick will find a screen and fire. Yeah, this is just a great shot. He moved his way to the middle of the ice here, waited for the screen to develop. Great shot by Jack Sadick. That's a goal scorer's goal right there. Great play. Eden Prairie would come back to tie it up at one. Steve Spinner, he's got a quick shot, and he, the goalie was screened on this one too, Mike. Right now, don't give Steven Spinner any room with his shot. He has a great release. He has an NHL release on his shot. That's how quickly he gets rid of it. Ooh, that's a nice compliment. Angelo Altavilla would score in a slap shot from the blue line. Jack Paling set this thing up. Well, this this was a great play by Jack Bailey. Just curled inside the blue line, delayed, 
waited for that defenseman, uh, Altavilla, to jump up in the play. Great find on that play. And the spinner came back once again. Right here, the play is, you know, he kind of picks it off by himself in the upper corner. I mean, that, that's a big league shot. There aren't a lot of people at any level that can score the goal that way. Right up over the goaltender's glove as he's going down. Great shot. The scoring wasn't done yet. Jack Sullivan sets up Jack Clay. This is a great play. You force the goalie to move because he thinks you're going around behind the net. You drop it back. And Spinner, Spinner was there for the easiest goal he scored this year. Today's stats are brought to you by Polymet, working on a plan to mine the copper, nickel, and other essential metals that make this broadcast possible. Learn more at gopolymet.com. Not a defensive battle. No, very even game. Uh, high scoring. I don't think any of us saw this happening. One coach describes Lakefield North as kind of playing a pond hockey style. I don't know if this is what they really want to get into, this type of style. They're freewheeling, but I don't think they expected to give up three goals this first period. Oh, yes. A lot of celebrations so far here at the XL Energy Center tonight. The first of two games on semifinal Friday from the XL Energy Center. High school hockey at its best right here on 45 TV. Tori? Well, thank you, Joe. Well, I went and talked to Trent Agner, the head coach for Lakeville North, and he goes, Tori, I'm just going to be honest with you and give me your thoughts. Hey, we did not play physical enough in that period. We got beat up a ton in the first period, and that's not the way that we want to play. We need to play together In every sport, every game, every athlete, we know what we need to do. Why can't we do it? That's what happens, Gary, when you get old. The head says you can do this, <laughs> but the hands and feet say, no, I can't. <laughs> well, sometimes even youngsters, the head says yes, and the legs and hands say no. And that's what's happened thus far for Lakeville North because they're nowhere near the team they were last night yep. or the team that beat this Eden Prairie team 7 nothing earlier in the year, so I would expect we're going to see a much better performance by Lakeville North this period. I'm sure the coaches got to them a bit. They told them what they have to do. They do have to start moving their feet in their own zone, and their passing's got to be better. Start with those two things. That gets you out of trouble first, and we know when you get, they get in the offensive zone, they've got exceptional skills and could put pucks in the net, so they got to change the way they're playing, and I would expect that they're going to do that this period. Should be a good period. Well, it'll be interesting to see. Adjustments are always necessary in every game in sports, and sometimes a game just takes over on you, and you it's not really within your control because it's not the kind of game you thought it was going to be, so you try and repossess it, if you will, and we'll see whether or not Lakeville can do that. I mean, even for Eden Prairie with a 3-2 lead here, you heard the coach uh, talking uh, to Tori uh, saying, you know, that's really not the kind of game we played. We tried that and lost 7-0 <laughs> first time we went around against uh, Lakeville. So, well, we'll see. That's why we're here. And the second period of this Game 1 semifinal is underway. It'll be chased back. Snuggerud and Chu, of course, the 2D who spent so much time on the ice back out there for Eden Prairie. Couldn't control that on the near side. Got it away to Graham, though. Graham moves it out. First line with their leader, Spinner, behind the net. Number 25, trying to chase down that puck. Paling gut there. So you've got the two offensive lines facing one another. The two top lines. Good move, man, by Nick Paling to get into the zone. Paling shuts it down, looking to the front. And back out onto the point. They'll set two out in front of the net. That'll be deflected. We had a no penalty first period in this game. So it was all five on five hockey. Rod back up, snug a rude, and rolls wide. Rebound shot, deflected. It'll go behind the net and off to the other side. Good effort. Aguilar holds it in. Aguilar, Graham, loves to drive the net. When he gets the puck, he's generally in a pretty good shooting position as he was on that last one. Long pass got intercepted. Panning trying to send it in, did. Back to get it, Aguilar couldn't handle it. Shot, that's going to go wide. And a big rip by Ryan Paling. And because he missed it all, the rebound comes all the way down to the other end. A little better start for Lakeville North in the offensive zone there. They had a couple of chances. They missed the net in one and missed the pass on the other. But that's the kind of start they needed. But you still see Eden Prairie playing the way they have to. Physical around the net and around the boards. And a real 
good checking game so far. That'll be chipped out. Nice play. Argetzinger coming in alone. Argetzinger trying to turn it. Can't center. Didn't have anybody there. It'll roll all the way back to the blue line and create a two on two the other way. As they're trying to move in, he gets tied up. Mark Sullivan, nice stick check right there as he reached in and held him. Battle behind the net. Haslett got it. Trying to move it out in front. That deflected away. Pike checking. Parrish able to move it for Eden Prairie. They'll send it to center. Line change made by Lakeville here. Puck sent in. They'll wave off any icing. Back to get it is Sullivan. He'll turn to the near side. Keeley, Keeley, the hit put on behind him. Keeley had the puck. Mark Sullivan got knocked down on the check. Getting up slowly, he is. Plants with it, center. That'll be chipped off the far side. Argetsinger. Argetsinger, a 10 goal scorer. He'll move. Line mates changing. Needs help. Hasn't got it. Into the middle. That got blocked. But long enough to get the line change completed. Can't be held in by Shu. Gets backed up by Snuggerud. Fast block. And that'll be sent in by Arnold. Arnold follows it up himself. Takes another hit from Snuggerud. Puck pinned up against the wall. Shoe there to play it. Good shot put on by Hyden. And a whistle. Well, some checks. That's right. And we had quite a few there. Much different for Lakeville North thus far. Mr. Hockey's got to be named for Minnesota for this hockey season. And here are the finalists. And you, as you look down a list, you see two of them are playing in this game tonight from Eden Prairie. Luke Stuggerud. And also, oh no, Steve Spencer is not there. I was going to put him as one. <laughs> Luke's the only one that, uh, oh, there is. Spinner is there. My eyes are failing me, Gary. <laughs> you got new eyes. You're all set. Yeah. I thought Spinner was one. I was hoping he was one. He deserves to be one, and he is one. He'd be really unhappy if he wasn't on that list, don't they? And he's showing tonight why he is one. Picked up two goals so far in this game for Eden Prairie. 13.45 left to go here in this period. All the goals came in the first. By the way, only the third time this year, Lakeville North has given up three goals in a period. Third time. Lane, they tied at 3-3. Eastview, they lost 4-3. And in each of those games, the three goals were given up in the first period, just like tonight. Snuggerud brings it in. Had it blocked. Chance for a three on two the other way, but they can't control it. Shoe. Knocked it ahead, taken back by Graham. Michael Graham just wanting to reset here. Snuggerud and Shoe on defense. Snuggerud sends it across ice, and it'll be moved out. Steven Spinner, they're keeping an eye on him and following through on checks whenever he's got the puck. They, Nick Bailey brings it back in. They definitely are checking more this period, Gary. You yeah. can certainly see the coaches got to him in that area. We've seen some real good heavy checks from Lakeville North. As we're taking a couple of pretty good hits, but he held on to the puck. Centery pass goes through and comes all the way to the near side. Good try to get that set up on the weak side. Skating down there was Henry Ennebeck, and he almost was able to tip it home. Covering up. McNeely back along the blue line now. Looking into the middle, his shot deflected out front. Again, went off the skate. Heinebeck was there, couldn't redirect it. Both teams putting some shots on. At the other end, you saw Steven Spinner put a hit on. He's tired of being the one taking it. And they dish a little out here in this game. Played around the boards. Heinebeck got it up. Couldn't control it, and both teams will change as it's dumped in. Well, that kind of exchange that we've just seen by Lakeville North is what we expected from them. They didn't show in the first period, but they're doing it here in the second. Much better forecheck on their part. Max Johnson takes his man down. Center didn't have anybody there. It'll be moved back out by Eden Prairie. Much different second period than the first. Yeah. Beautiful sliding hip check on the far side by Insera, who put a real nice shot on over there and took his man out. Puts another pretty good hit on right there. Bailing knocked it away. Centering pass comes all the way back to the top of the dot. Ennebeck was there, couldn't control. They'll move it in. They are changing, waiting for some help on the ice. So dumped into the far side corner by Jack Bailey. Moved back out of the zone. Eden Prairie can't control. A lot of people playing in the other team's jerseys right now here <laughs> all over the ice. And that really slows down any offensive chances. There haven't been many here to start this second period. Moves to the forehand. Shot and a save made. Bailing got it where he wanted it. Tried to go short side. That's right. 
Palin came right around the outside and got in on the net, couldn't get a lot on it as we look at a hip check by Ansara. And this is quite a different Lakeville North than we saw in the first period. Look at that check right there that you saw from Johnson. And earlier, Hayden had left a good check on. So we are seeing a Lakeville North team that we expected to see, the kind of team that was able to get the number two seed this year. Aiden Prairie has been willing to, to answer it. Great poke check by Sadik that time. He came away with the puck. He's got it along the blue line. Afraid he was going to be offside. He came back to center a little bit. He played deeper in the zone. Argett Singer, Argett Singer, the flip out to center, trying to break Keeley. Keeley unable to control the puck. Try on the nine irons, going to go off the bench, and we'll get a whistle with 10.38 to go in the period. Today's closed captioning is brought to you by Polymet, working on a plan to mine the copper, nickel, and other essential metals that make this broadcast possible. Learn more at gopolymet.com. Well, now we, we can expect the kind of period and the rest of the game that we're seeing in this period. We can expect both these clubs now to be checking. The checking will get tighter. The plays will get floppier. But the chances will get better because now when you take a man out, you eliminate a man, you get some room on the ice. And that's what these teams need, room to get some good quality chances. And a back shot. They're just there to make the save on it. Rebound. That was batted off the side of the net. Benevec had gotten it down low behind the net. Can't handle it. Rolls around. Has it on the far side. This line has played well. Shot. And a glove save will be made on McNeely's chance from right along the blue line. Yeah, he was looking through traffic. You're right. McNeely had a good chance from the blue line, but... The goaltender, Gertie's just had enough of it. You see this? Watch in front of the net. You see just an opening there where Gertie's can see it all the way. The traffic was on the right, but he could see that outside as he had a couple of players, especially Johnson, try to tip it down. But we're not able to do it. Gertie's made the save. He nearly set a school record defenseman in points scored this season, so he's not afraid when he's got the puck to put it on net. That'll be turned back up. Aguilar will bring it up. Aguilar, they're dumping to the opposite corner, trying to chase down and then get it back into the middle. Schmidt that time behind the net, had nowhere to go with it. Michael Graham out there on the line with him. Back to the point, shot's going to go wide. Mark Sullivan actually trying to set up his man on the far side post. And that one again is going to hit the front of the bench and come off. So two very different periods. Five goals, ten shots in the first period. Here in the second, very... But I always say the game's never over if you're down two and you got more than 21 seconds to go because Mosienko scored three in the New York Rangers yep. when he was with the Blackhawks in 21 seconds. So Pretty amazing. Never say you're out of it until you're out of it. The Dinah trying to defend their championship, make it two in a row. They'll be playing in the second of the semifinal games here tonight. 9.35 left to go here in this defensive second period. Moved up and out of the zone, but it's just been an exchange of the puck for most of this period through center ice. Better drops it off, far side. Schmidt, Schmidt will move, nobody in the middle for him. Shot and a save made. Not much of an angle right along the extended goal line there, but somehow got it on net. Not much of an angle, but he was smart enough to shoot. By the way, that's Eden Perry's first shot this period, almost eight minutes of play. But he was expecting the goalie to come off the pipe. He shot in the short side. Goalie was able to save it. You see the goalie just moving right there, but he was able to save it. You can never, ever leave that pipe when someone's still got an angle to shoot on you because sometimes it goes right in, sometimes it could be deflected in. So when the guy's on the far side, you're the goaltender, hold tight to the pipe and make certain until that puck is released and gone by you that you're not leaving any space there. Jay Conager, who set a new school record, tied one with five shutouts for a season and a new record for him in that department and uh, tonight both these goaltenders were greeted by first period goals in the middle all alone shot star it deflected twice and Michael Parrish picks up a goal and a 4-2 lead for Eden Prairie and the key in that was a nice play by Arnold many times people just pass blindly across the slot throw it away that wasn't a blind pass that was a good pass Arnold getting that puck out to Parrish. And boy, oh boy, I shouldn't have said Arnold, Ar Arkansinger actually. Arkansinger was the one making the pass out of the corner to Parrish. Watch him here, fights off the check, number eight, getting a smart up. Did you see the way he looked out in the slot? 
That wasn't blind. That was perfect. Great setup. And Parrish with a big goal. Mm. Eden Prairie, which averaged 3.75 goals a game this year, has put four goals in net against one of the best defensive teams in all of Minnesota hockey. And they've got a 4 2 lead with 8.57 left to go in the second period. Parrish's fifth of the year, first of the tournament, 7.58. Saturday pass, boy, they had an opening. Paley was cutting. Pass a little bit too far ahead for Jack Paley. At the point, almost held in. Here's a two on one. Here's a three on one the other way. In the middle, spinner, fanned on it. Second shot, never got it off to the net. Oh, will he want that one back? <laughs> yes, he will. Oh. That was a great play. That are in front of the net will deflect it. It'll go wide. They ended up with a three on one opportunity and had their leading scorer, Steven Spinner, with his hand on the puck for the shot. And it'll come back into the zone where it'll be played up by Sullivan and up the center. Cleared Lakeville. And just dump it in. Wave off any offside or icing, and Sullivan's got to come back to get it. Sullivan pays the price. Hyden got him with a check. Spinner's still out there racing for the puck. Couldn't get there in time. Arnold. Arnold let it poke checked away. Cleared ahead by Schmidt. Great checking job by Eden Prairie throughout most of this game. They have just broken up passes. Prevented, for the most part, Lakeville skaters from moving the puck up and down the ice on their own stick. They're really keeping our gaps tight, the forwards and defensemen. Not much space between them, not much space to move the puck. And they are coming back and back checking the way the coach wanted them to. Here's Lawrence, shot. That's going to be up off the goaltender and off the glass. Good chance, Cole Lawrence. He got around the D that time on that left wing side. Played back by Snuggerud. Snuggerud will be chased. He had two defenders on him. Of course, Snuggerud is quick. And he'll lead the charge the other way. Snuggerud trying to center it. Came off the back of the net. Pope checked away as Jack Sullivan was reaching for it. And it'll be moved up by Lakeville through center. Arnold had it off the far side boards. Hyden's got it. He's all a, a check put on over there, rather, on Sepper, who was all alone with the line change. Had no one to go to. Third back up, Snuggerud again in shot. That one's going to go wide near side. I get Slinger the opportunity. And Lakeville's got to be concerned here about all of these open ice chances. No doubt about it, because before checking by this Eden Prairie team, and look at this nice three-on-one play, and it just seemed to slip off spin, spinner's stick. He, he will want that one back, as you said, Gary. That was a great opportunity for him to get the hat trick. Just slipped away from him. But Eden Prairie, as you said, started to take control again. They started to use their body. They're skating. They got their feet moving. Not much space in between the forwards and the defensemen. They're not giving Lakeville any opportunity to get good chances. You saw the match up there. That number 20 in white was Jack McNeely, who's drawn the assignment of Steven Spinner. Mm -hmm. Snuggerud, their rusher on the bench right there. The defenseman who plays so much. We'll see whether he gets back in or whether he's got a problem. It's going to keep him out of there. That would be a big loss. And in back moved it in. Played around the boards by Graham. It'll be whistled behind the play. A penalty coming up and a holding call. And this is going to be our first penalty of the game. And it will go against Eden Prairie. And it's going to be something that Lakeville really needs. Even though they haven't had a strong power play this year, 21%. They have to find a way to get on the board. Trailing 4-2, to two, not having much offensive opportunity to score goals. You see the hold blatantly right in front of the net. The man's taken down. <laughs> Sullivan's going to be going to the box and Lakeville North on the power play. The holding call comes at 10.30. In the quarterfinal game last night, Lakeville ended up with an 0 for 2 and 6 shots on their power play chances. Paling, Nick Paling drops it down low, heads to the net, back on top. Brian Paling left it, shot, save made. That got kicked out off the left pad. They try and move it down a little closer with Eden Prairie staying pretty tight to the box. Deflected pass. Rovar got it. Sends it up, but not out. Good hold in. Sadik on the far side. Paling leaves it near. Jake Paling dropped it off. And Nick Paling coming around the net. That's him with the puck. On top. Paling. Nick Paling shot. That goes wide. Went for the far side post. 
Sadik will hold it in. Big power play chance down by two. Lakeville. 107 left here in the period. Again, a lot of room way inside the dot. Pope checked away, though, as Nick Paling was moving into the top of the slot. Shot, save made as that one got kicked out on the chance by Sadik. Sadik holds it in. Eden Prairie unable to clear here. All of the defenders have been out for the whole power play chance. Shot, that one went off in front of the net. Inebeck played it back. Again, Sadik's got it. Inebeck's chance, that goes wide. Rebound Paling, Nick Paling on the near side. 35 on the power play. Nick Paling again, a lot of room from the dot shot. A pass deflected. Finally controlled, Jack Keeley and will clear. Oh, great puck control by Blake Bill. They had a lot of good passing, a lot of good shots. Just couldn't quite dent the cage. And that last one would have been an open net, but a good defensive play by the defenseman of Eden Prairie in front of the net to deflect it at the last second. And Eden Prairie able to clean it out of there. Eden Prairie on the shorthanded unit on the course of the year, 74% effective, not particularly high. They stay tight to the box, and the penalty's over. So they do not convert. Lakeville does not on the first and only power play that we've had in the game. Five on five, Eden Prairie with the puck back in their own end, flipped out of the zone. Luke Snuggerud back out there on the ice. It's good to see that he was not injured and right back out on his next ship. That'll be batted up in the air. Altavella was coming over to get it. Rolls back into the zone. 4-2 lead. Eden Prairie, if you will, by the seedings. They would be the underdog. They are seeded third coming into this tournament. Lakeville North number two. Shot save made right up around the cage. Mm, you could hear that one on the rattle. Max Johnson coming through the middle with a chance. Slugger Rude the other way. And a save made kicked out by Ottinger. That was a good opportunity for Lakeville. He, he couldn't get to the rebound either because the rebound came out five feet. But that's what Lakeville's got to do, get some shots on the net. They're starting to do a little bit more of it this period. Hailing again. They get this line out there right off the power play. Back out in the five on five. Spinner turning. He'll be guarded closely. Bad pass. Hailing into the middle. Knocked down. Trying to get a backhand shot. It rolls in. It's still free. Ian Klotz had the second chance. And now a penalty coming up. Another real good chance, two of them, in fact, for Lakeville on that surge, and we'll get another penalty in a maybe two. Well, it is a 4-2 lead as Eden Prairie's on top now by two. Best opportunity perhaps of the second period came right here. On a shot that went up and rattled the cage. He's here, right in front of the net. Klotz is going after the rebound. And then after the whistle, here comes Snuggerud to cross-check him. Klotz gives it right back to him. And so both of those guys will be going off right now. So we'll still have five on five. Coincidental minors with Lakeville trailing 4-2, to 3.17 to go. And finally getting a couple of opportunities, a couple of shots on net from in closer than they were taking them in the first period. Snuggerud got the cross-checking call. Klotz got the roughing call, 13-43. Being the time of the matching minors. Shots are 11-10. Lakeville North actually has the lead in that department, but it's a 4-2 lead for Eden Prairie. They continue to rush the puck. Backhand chance is going to be blocked. Good play by Jack Paling, who moved in with a stick that time. Blue line shot's going to come right back to the point. Argett Singer back behind the net. Graham dropped it. Spinner's out there. Spinner trying to move to the front. Can't. Nick Paling's got it, and then we'll move it out. Game has been played in surges. Yes, it has. <laughs> there have been some real good offensive chances at both ends when the teams start running. That shot goes wide, and then the game just turns back into a defensive game where they'll go for minutes just turning the puck over. There's a turnover in the offensive zone. Good squeeze off cover up as Gurgis got out and made sure nobody was going to get a second chance on that. And good work by defensemen, both uh, Ag Agliar and uh, Sullivan making certain that he couldn't get through to that loose puck and the goaltender wisely just jumping on and freezing it. As you look at Ryan Paling, the Paling brothers ever dangerous whenever they're on the ice. You'll see him try to split right here. Here's uh, Ryan Paling, but look at all the, both defensemen coming with Spinner coming back, but both Aguilar and Sullivan make certain that Paling wasn't getting through. Face off. One, uh, but back into the corner. Haslett won the draw. Couldn't get a shot off on it, then got knocked down. Chase to the near side, and another good hit put on in the corner. And again, it's going to force Eden Prairie back behind their own net. 
Eden Prairie getting Brett Bolden now out there, number 44. I don't think has been on the ice before. Errant pass. That'll go back in behind the net. Bolden now trying to help out as he took down Haslett, who was moving in to get it. Here's Bolden now moving it up. Bolden now couldn't control. Back in. Haslett is really strong on his skates to the middle shot and a big save made rebound kick to the near side Max Johnson coming down the middle again there's a player's uh, due it's Johnson shot score from just inside the dot the captain puts one home and it is a 4-3 game boy was that a great play a great play good shot good play all around when you look at the Turnover that set it up, but Hazlett, who initially he threw two real good checks on the offense, that sort of kept the puck in the zone. That got these guys going, and then Johnson over to Hazlett with a great shot. Watch the patience here by Johnson. Nice little move, pass across. Hazlett coming in late, hits the far upper corner, and that's it. But great work right here by Max Johnson, number six. Watch him. Nice little move there. Great pass across. Mm. Boy, you uh, you can't make a play any prettier than that. That's that's what you want to do, and the lead's cut four to three here. One thirty-five to go in the second period. Hazlett is having a great post-regular season, both uh, in the sectionals and here. He gets his eleventh, his thirteenth of the season, first of this tournament. Johnson and Sadik will pick up the assists. He's now at four goals and seven assists in the postseason for Lakeville. And they'll pick that up on their 13th shot of the game. Well, that will fire them up again. Paling lost it, though. Down the middle, backhander, and a save made. Look behind him, but he wasn't there. Rebound shot gets kicked away. Two chances. Aguilar had the follow-up, but couldn't drive it home. After an initial chance by Parrish. Back into the corner, handling uh, the skates. Biden that time almost went down on his back. Lost it on the near side. Seemingly when either team scores, we start to see the offensive play pick up. I get Singer. His team changing up behind him. He'll be pinned up on the boards, and it's taken away by Altavilla. Altavilla moved it up. Two on two the other way. Cutting to the middle. Hazlett again. Hazlett didn't get the return pass. Shot and the save made. Rebound. That's the explosiveness that this team has. It looks like nothing's going on, and the next thing you know, a shot from the outside, actually a shot from the right side from one tailing, gets a great save by Gertie's. However, the rebound deflects far out to the right, and coming off the boards is Nick Palin, and he just fires that puck right in the net. Watch this. You're going to get a, a shot right here from the far side by Jack Palin. Nick coming in from the far side. Before the goalie can react, we got a shot, we got a goal, we got a tie game. Just like that. With 35 seconds to go in the second period, oh, we got a tie. These teams offensively just refusing to go away. Paling gets his 13th of the year, first of the tournament. Brother Jake got the assists on it. 16-25 will be the time of the goal of Jack Paling on the assist. And tied at 4-4. Four -four. Shots are 14-11 in favor of Lakeville, so the two-goal lead is gone. Backhander and a save made off the chance by Innebeck. Innebeck just backhanded it on net. Gerdes had to knock it away. Turning up, Max Johnson. Johnson's due, I said, because he's had some great chances. There's a shot and covered up right at the side of the net as he tried to go post. You know, Gary, the biggest turner on that period was a great play by Parrish coming down, splitting the defense, going in all alone, made a nice move to his backhand, and the save was made. Big key save. Lakeville North comes right back down the ice, and they get the goal. You're looking at your goal scorer right there, Nick Palin on a great shot off a rebound after his brother Jack had put a fine shot in the far corner, only to have Gertis turn it away with a skate save. Lakeville's picked up their chances this period. They have outshot Eden Prairie 12-5 here in the second period and not done yet that'll be handled in the glove on a blue line chance with 1.6 seconds left to go Jack Sadick with the opportunity and they like Sadick shooting the puck from the blue line especially when they have screens he's got a great shot he's already got one in this game they feed him a lot he puts him on the net and if there's any rebound you always see those paling boys right around the crease looking for it now a chance off the draw here 
Jack Bailing is going to take the face off in white. Will try and shoot this obviously on net. On the other side, you just want to tie it up here and let that clock 1.6 tick off. Got the shot off though. It ended up hitting the D and is kicked out. Wow. Well, what a game. We did not think this would be an offensive flow game, but for both periods, it's pretty much been that. Well, what happened was Lakefield North came out and changed their blue style of play. They came out and finally started taking the body. They're now leading in shot 17 to 11. That means that Eden Perry's only got five this period and 13 for Lakefield North. They changed their style. They started to skate. They started to take the body. They started to take shots. They started Started that puck control, and that really changed the balance in this game. Now you've got an even game. Eden Prairie is not going away. They're playing well. They're playing hard, and you can expect them to stay physical. And let's check in with Tori. Coach, uh, you, you kind of changed it up a little bit there. Uh, you, you really got physical in that second period, a much better uh, period for you there. Uh, what was your assessment of the second? Well, I think the energy level was a lot better for us, and that was key. I mean, we just weren't very good in the first. Um, you know, I could talk about a lot of things on the grease board, but it don't matter if you're not working hard. Get a couple of goals right there at the end to change the money and take it into the third period here. What are you going to talk to the team about? Well, I think we just want to continue doing what we did the last 10 minutes of that period. If we can be solid in our own zone and sort things out, I think we have some success. We've got a lot of momentum going, a lot of energy, and I think we'll have a good third period. Always appreciate your time. Thanks. Gary? Winner of this one's going to move on to the championship game tomorrow. Nadina and Egan will be playing in their second game semifinal tonight, but we've got... A real good finish coming, Luke. You're right. I think, Gary, we're going to see the best period of the three. The game's been getting progressively better. We're seeing now both teams skating, both teams being physical, both teams getting opportunities, passing the puck, and you could expect from this point on, they're going to play their best because each of them knows one period to the state championship, it wants to be me. Kind of a game where you saw when we showed you that fan, it makes your hair stand right on end. All of it. Even those of us in the booth who don't have much left to stand. Third period. Good enough. The tenders have been outstanding, not just tonight, but throughout the tournament. Long shot. Ford. Rebound. They That's score! in the net. They throw it back in front. And he lost that glove again. Thrown to the net. Janetta. They score. Raff ties it up. Boy, Raff just reached around. That shot from the point was just... A little rebound. Rink wide for Kurt Rao. Big drive. Janetta lost it. Cleared. They score. They score. Eden Prairie wins. Can I talk to these guys? Oh, what an amazing night back in 2011. Three overtimes. Eden Prairie won their first state championship 3-2. to two. I think we all remember that one pretty well. What a game. That was. Kyle Rawl really had a big game that night. It was an unbelievable night for one other reason a lot of people didn't see on uh, on their TVs that night. It was Mike Randolph, you remember, went into the Eden Prairie locker room, congratulated them on their state tournament, and then thanked Rao and those guys for coming back to play their senior season in high school. Yeah, we've had some overtime finals in the past, and uh, they're all special because every single shift means something. Well, I think everybody who comes to the XL Energy Center state tournament time, they're looking for an overtime overtime game they want the thrillers and we certainly have had our share of them the last few years and we certainly are on our track to maybe seeing one here tonight in this first game remember the goaltender from Duluth East Joe Joe Janetta boy he put on a show well did he? he kind of came out of nowhere that season you know he was an unknown going in for Mike Randolph that year and he played spectacularly he held them in there it was a great great effort by him heartbroken at the end but he had nothing to hang his head about about his performance how long do you think these kids talk about this I mean it, does they seriously talk about this until they're 80 I think they do. I don't think they ever forget about it. I mean, you talk to anybody who's played in the state tournament or been been a part of a state tournament and then gone on to bigger and better things, it's still the state tournament what they talk about. It's Mark, pretty special. Yeah, Mark Parrish today, is they're having their reunion of their 25th, championship, yeah. the 25th tonight. He was getting 
uh, texts and emails during our broadcast this afternoon about that. So do they forget it? No, he and Ben Clymer, what are they talking about it today? It was their championship day. It is always amazing that even when some of these pro hockey players, you know, Neil yeah. Broughton always says, he's won a Stanley Cup, he won the gold medal in 1980. He liked the state tournament the best. Yeah. No question. It was fun to hear Mark and Ben talk about their experience yeah. today on the set and watching him skate out at the old um, Civic Center and just great memories for these kids. And you know what? These kids are, you know, going to have a lifetime of memories. Well, I'll tell you what, there are two teams on the ice right now that are making some memories, not only for themselves, but people in this audience here and you at home watching it because we've got a 4-4 game. Defense has been optional so far in this game, but we've got a 4-4 game. We're going to have the highlights from the second period of this thriller on semi-final Friday night from the XL Energy Center coach and uh, a gentleman will five goals win this game I doubt it the way this is going you're going to need more than just one more even if the goaltenders play well the way these kids are jacked up and going now there's no stopping them Dave will they be playing it closer to the vest you think with 17 minutes left nobody wants to make that mistake no I, I think they're gonna they're gonna tighten it up a little bit here um, it's a 4-4 game they're not gonna push the you know push the envelope here as Trent Eigner said here at the intermission break here they've got to start playing better in their own end if you play well in your own end it usually results in a good you know a positive change at the other end, and they got to start playing tighter defense. Well, this might funny. be one of those. Excuse me, Joe. This might be one of those games where you don't you want to tighten up and you want the kids to play better. They want to play better in their own defensive zone, but it just doesn't happen. The offenses are so good tonight. All right, let's take a look at the goals here from the second period of action. It was 3-2 Eden Prairie heading into the period, but EP went up 4-2, and Michael Parrish will get this one. There's nice forecheck here by Eden Prairie. They win the battle for the puck. They come out of the corner here, right in front right into the slot. Michael Parrish makes a nice shot. Parrish a good example of a solid forecheck winning the puck battles. So the Eagles have a two-goal lead, but then Lakeville North came back with a couple of goals with 135 left. Hazlett gets this one. Yeah, what was great to see is some balanced scoring out of this uh, Lakeville North team. They've got the balance through their lineup. That Hazlett, Johnson, and Ebeck line has been playing great all tournament. They were rewarded there. And then on this play here, you know, all great scores, all great players put pucks towards the net. And he here on this play, Jack Paling throws it hard at the net. His brother, Nick Paling, pounds in the rebound, and we got a tie ball game. Fours are wild so far here tonight. Today's stats are brought to you by Polymed, working on a plan to mine the copper, nickel, and other essential metals that make this broadcast possible. Learn more at GoPolymed.com. And uh, once again, um, a few more shots on goal for Lakeville North. Uh, Face-offs, again, are a little lopsided, but not by much. I would have thought Lakeville had more wins on the face-offs than, uh, than Eden Prairie did. It's, at least it seemed that way to me. All right, guys, it's only going to set up a fantastic fantastic third period so stand by now let's learn more from the specialist at Tria orthopedic center helping you move toward a healthier lifestyle <laughs> 17 minutes of hockey left or maybe more let's end it on down to tory hold in between the benches tory thanks joe well gary and lou one thing to keep an eye on here in the third period is luke snuggerud and that broken hand he broke that hand during the sectional final. We talked about it. He played through it into the third period, the double overtime victory. He's been dealing with it. It's been bothering him. He took a few slashes during that first period, and every time he comes over to the bench, he gets hit on it. He's keeling over, and it's really starting to bother him. So it's just up to him how much pain he can take. Where they need him on the ice. He chalks up so much ice time and has handled the puck really well. We've seen him Lou go end to end. And he had that hand injury from that final. Didn't seem to bother him in the games last night. I talked to the coach before the game. It's in his back of the third metatarsal. So it doesn't bother your fingers or the stick. It's going to bother you if you get slashed again. Yeah. But uh, he, he doesn't have a cast on or anything. He's just, uh, he's got pain back in that area if he gets hit on it. So he's got to make certain that uh, he doesn't get hit on it. If he does, the referees better watch for slashing because yeah. that's the only way he's going to get it hurt bad. And, and if they get a slash on there again, he'll really feel it. it's already uh, painful enough as it is. Well, these goaltenders, speaking of being painful for both of them, not the kind of game that they uh, anticipated with the eight combined goals having been scored and a trip to the championship game tomorrow night at stake as we get set for the third period. 
Face-offs have gone. Face-offs. Eden Prairie 23 to 18. The advantage coming into this third period that can matter. Tight game on these draws. And it will be chased down into the zone as we get underway here in the third. Let's see what this period looks like. Whether the defenses can rise to the occasion or will the offenses continue to score? Moved up McNeely on the near side. Tried to get it out. Could not. Shot New Bluff save. Start out offensively with Spinner who's got two in the game getting a chance. And that's why you don't want to have giveaways to Spinner as you just had right there. There's one guy you don't give the puck to in the offensive zone, and that's Spinner. He's already made two great shots. He's very active with a shot, and he's got a bullet for a shot, so don't give him chances unless he has to work for him. And he won that faceoff, 25, and he's over there to get it. Spinner uh, leads their team with four shots on net now. On the other side, Jack Sadik has four, and uh, Henry Ennebeck has three for Lakeville. That'll roll all the way over to the far side. Caught out to Vila going over to get it. Left it there. Paling's got it. Paling will turn to the near side in his own end. Again, the four checking. Three in the zone that time for Eden Prairie. And another turnover. Parrish moves it to the corner. Paling puts the hit on him. Freed up, not out. And right on net. It is loose at the side of the cage. They can't get a stick on it. Jack Keeley was there trying to drive it home. Couldn't do it. Bailing comes the other way. Whistle. That'll be offside. Those guys are dangerous. Keeley's the one that got the short-handed goal in the overtime to send Eden Prairie to the state championship. And this time, it's Parrish does a lot of work out there. He's having a very good night. And there's the puck free in front of that. You see, really, Keeley really working at him. Arkansinger coming in there as well. But it all started with with Parrish. He's having a very, very good night with the puck. He's been big, strong. He's created chances. Made a great pass. Before and he got a very nice goal after a pass from Argentina. All right, Sullivan got it up. The shot will go to the far side as they do a little dumping and chasing. Eden Prairie here, knocked behind the net by Clay. As good work as he came up, Eggbell able to get it. And again, as we've seen so often, they can move it out of the zone, but they are unable to control it and create any passing offense going into the zone. Well, they're going to have to start dumping it in a little bit when you got the defense standing up there. You got. Put it in deep and go and beat him to it. Just like that. Right now, you got to take the man out and go after those pucks. Mark Sullivan got there first, cleared it around the boards and out to center. A little cautious defensive play, and you can understand that. These kids know what's at stake here in this third period. One more might be the deciding goal on a shot at the state championship tomorrow night. Dangerous pass all the way through center, and it will be an icing call back for the faceoff. Those are very dangerous passes. When you're in your own zone, you almost have a have to have a cardinal rule: no passes across the front of the ice, in front of the net. When you make a rink-wide pass in your own zone, that's always a chance for the opposition to intercept and get a good shot on goal. Nice crowd here tonight. Big house here. Already looks like uh, all the seats are full, and this. Just game one. Off the near side, Colton Schmidt. Schmidt, their senior. Flips it off the boards, wants to chase it down. Get around. Schneider moves it off. Spinner. Shot, spinner cutting. Shot never got through to him, though, as it got blocked out the Vila. Got a piece of that one. Held in uh, to the near side, trying to get it out in front. Centering pass again, the side of the net. Spinner, their leading scorer, keeps cycling down low here. They try and open him up. Graham shot, save made, rebound kicked out deep. That one had a lot of rebound on it. Good chance for Michael Graham. Turn on the far side, clutch center. Goes off the goaltender stick, not a shot on net. It was at the side of the net. And a Snuggerud with the bad hand. Clearing it out of there. Klotz put the check on him to finish it off. Both teams trying to keep the defenses tight here to start this third period. Snuggerud back. Lakeville changing. Through the middle. He got blocked. Controlled and brought in by Parrish. Would have been an offside here. They'll clear the zone. Avoid the whistle. Out to the line and up. Paling's got it. Nick drops it into the middle. Here's Ryan back to Nick. Nick in, trying to get it back. Had a shot right there that he passed up for one more pass. You're right, Gary. That's when you got to take the shot, especially when you got a tie game. Pucks are going in sometimes from way out. You've got to take that shot. Paling's really handle the puck well, but sometimes he overpass it. And the chance is going to be blocked in behind the net. Good play by Jack Healy again. Rebound, shot, and a 
a save oh. made. And it's held on to. Wow. Good second effort by Argot Singer in front. Argot Singer spun, fired a right on net, but the goaltender beat him. That was as good a chance as you're going to get. Outstanding chance, but the score still remains tied. 14-4, 13-09 to go here in the third period. We've got a real good one going here. Just keeping an eye on a number of players and some who have made commitments. There they are. Has quite a few, and there'll be uh, many more. When you look at the group of players we got in this tournament, the talent is coming. Some of them younger, some of them that haven't committed, like Nick Wolf, that's uh, a Mr. Hockey candidate. There's a great steal for the break. Bailing in, shot, and it's kicked back in behind the net. Rebound went to the side of the net as Nick Paling had the second opportunity and couldn't find the puck. It just kept dancing on him. Real surge here for this first line. That's going to be blocked. Nick Paling had the opportunity again. It'll be brought out by Eden Perry. Their score, Spinner. Two goals. Spinner, the move. Tried to center. It got blocked. Chipped into the corner. Spinner will head to the front of the net, but Graham couldn't control. Aldevilla's got it. Aldevilla will D, and they'll start it up. 17-15 shots in the game. Lakeville North, the advantage by two. By the way, we were looking. Lakeville North has given up five goals in a game once this year. St. Thomas Academy back on December 7th. They lost that game, and it's the only game where they surrendered five. They've given up four so far in this one. Back out to center, and they'll get back on side. That's Lake how tight their defense has been all year. And Lakeville North has got their legs moving now. They're starting to create some opportunities because they're skating and they're getting the loose pucks quicker than Eden Prairie. Snuggerud clears it around the boards. They're putting a pretty good forecheck on as well. Clays tried to move it out. He got spun around. Haslett over there helped to hold it in. Clipper was there to help out. It'll come all the way across along the blue line and just tipped back out to center. 13, uh, 11, 34 left to go. There's the pass that got deflected away. Brought in Sullivan. Sullivan's shot will go wide. Jack Sullivan rebounded off the near side wall, not out. Good work by Clays. Clays, great battle down there for Eden Prairie to hold it in a little while. Taking away Hasley, he cleared it around. And back with it, Lakeville still. Three four checkers were in the zone when they started out that time. Then Eden Prairie backs up, forcing the dump in. They can't get their Lakeville out of puck. Popped up in the middle. Back out onto the point. Tied to shot. Missed it wide. And that was a worm eater right on the ice. Yeah, and the goaltender was green. He didn't see that at all, Gary. Mm -hmm. Real good chance right there. As Lou said, Lakeville really picking up the play now as far as the skating is concerned. Alta Villa on the far side. Alta Villa bumped off by Sullivan. That got the puck out to center. Lakeville will get it right back, though. Mark Sullivan clears it out, knocked down with the glove. Potts moves it back in on net, and that will be held on to for the whistle. Well, we're going to see an earlier Lakeville chance. The puck is stolen right there from Snuggerud and taken off as the guy you want to take off with it. Paling, Jack Paling coming in, making a shot, but goaltender Gerties with a big save. Here he is right there. Jack Paling, good save right there. Save of the game for goaltender Gerties because you got your leading scorer of Lakeville coming down on you, and you stole him the way you have to to keep this game tied at four. Will there be only one more goal scored in this game? I think so. It certainly looks like it right yeah. now. Well, you might get an open net goal after yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Both teams have kind of shut it down here in the third period as far as the opponent's offense is concerned. Let's see if that stays true. It is sent in by Niederer into the far side corner. And Niederer out there on the line now with Graham and Spinner. Back into the middle. This is Jack Paley moving it in. It'll just roll in on net. He got knocked down, covered up by Gerties again. Well, the defenseman made certain he wasn't getting through that time. Both defensemen took him down. Gerties makes a save, holds on to the puck. And actually for Eden Prairie, even though they're getting faceoffs in their own zone, right now it's good to get faceoffs because Lakeville is coming after them, and they're coming with speed. So it's good that Eden Prairie gets to slow that pace down a bit because they're not as quick as Lakeville. And it's good for them to set it up like they have. And low uh, face Faceoffs are right now are 28-19 in favor of Eden Prairie. They've had the advantage and they get another one right there. Their leading faceoff man is Spinner. He's a leader in a lot of departments. Shot deflected wide. What a chance right there for Nick Bailing. 
A bouncing puck that he drove wide to the right side of the net for the would have been the go ahead goal. Knocked away at center. That was Jack Paling who had it. Again, they try and dump it in deep. Can't shoot. Was there to block it? Lost it. Shot. Save made. Snuggerud. Snuggerud. Save made by the defenseman Brandy Shoe. Shoe stayed in front of it and knocked it down. Rolled to the other end. It just chipped away from a charging play. Held in along the far side boards. Now we'll see if Eden Prairie picks up the pace in the hitting and skating department and creates some chances for themselves. Boy, I'll tell you. They had a couple turnovers. Eden Perry did in their own zone. They're very lucky to come away right now with a 4-4 tie when you're looking at 9.23 to go in this third period. Remember we what's at stake, a championship game tomorrow night and 9.23 to go in the third. On 45 TV, Gary Thorne and Lou Nanny. A great to have you with us all across Minnesota for this great tournament as this is a great semifinal game. It's not the kind of game that was expected by most who follow these teams, much more offensively oriented and 4-4. Yet, here in the third, as we just said, it may come down to one more goal. And they're certainly getting more chances in this period than they had in the first two. We're getting some wide open shots here. Goaltenders have had to make excellent saves on both ends of the rink. Oh, the draw. Parrish losing that one to Max Johnson. Cleared all the way up. Mark Sullivan will chase. Sullivan taken down. Puck underneath him. Officials want it played. Uh, Sullivan gets up, tried to bang it ahead, couldn't get it out of the zone. Shot will go wide of the net. Taper there in the chance to the other point. Shot blocked out deep. Sadik had the opportunity there, and Lakeville has to clear. And Keeley's going off after blocking that shot. He got hit with a hard one. Will uh, make his way over to the bench and try and work that off. Brought back in. Argetsinger shot, save made, short side. He's played well. Argetsinger, a 10 goal scorer on the season, has had a couple of chances. And he had a great got assist, it. too. Yeah. As we got it to the far side, moved back into the middle. Lakeville changing it up here, so nobody to help out. Spinner, their leader, feathers that one down the wall. Both teams with the line changes here, so trying to create some time, and the puck will go back in behind the net, not going to blow the whistle on it. Snuggerud thought he might have had an icing call coming there. Now he'll lug it the other way. Again, he goes length of the ice. This time, lost the edge. And the puck will come to the near side. No chance out of it. Back paling. Lost it. Got it. Jammed into the corner, not out of the zone. Shot and a save made. Randy Shue has only got two goals on the season. Got that one straight through on net. Here's Nick Paling dropping. And the shot will go up into the netting. Well, you see a nice block shot by Jack Healy. Nice enough to take him out of the game for a little while. Here's a shot from the blue line. Good shot by Sadik, who can really shoot it. Hits Keeley, I think, right around the knee. And... It's bothering me. You can see him limping right there, number 12, and he went off, but I'm sure he'll be back. But he's, he's sitting there on the bench, and it'll be stinging for a while, but not enough to keep him out of the game, I'm sure. Both teams very tentative here in what they're doing, neither wanting to make the one mistake that will cost them a game, and as the clock ticks down, likely to get more so as far as tentativeness is concerned. Snugger Root. Not going to go in to end this time. Just dumps that one in. And nearly came back to get it. Fanned on the attempted out. Puck sitting there. He pushed it ahead. They'll work it up on the far side. Ryan Paling coming. Ryan Paling had hiding out in front of him. Couldn't get it there, though. He had to stay at the blue line to stay on side. Little feather pass will be tipped to center. Two on one this time. Lawrence. Lawrence, he paid the price. And that'll be taken... From back in behind the net, moved up. Zephyr's got it. Paling's trying to get up ice, trying to get behind the D. Very hard to do, though, in this game. Down they go with the puck on the dot. Matt Arnold got knocked down that time. Boy, we are playing close to the vest yes, right now. We are. What's very surprising, thus far, we have had a couple of good chances this period, and nothing went in. Open, shot, save made, and kick back. That was a line change opportunity right there for Max Johnson. Right back the other way by Parrish. Parrish shot, that's blocked. Parrish had it, lost it. Jack Keeley, number 12, trying to control, got it down deep. Target singer. 
Target Singer blocked away from Michael Parrish, 19, who is at the side of the net. As it will drop it back deeper, and Lakeville will move it up. Jam shot along the boards. Hazlitt took the hit that time. Aguilar moved in, freed it up. Hazlitt loose in front of the net. Couldn't get the pass back to him. And that'll be one-armed on the near side. Colt Schmidt. Schmidt drops it off. Again, the team's changing. A couple of line changes here that have created opportunities. Shot, that's going to go high and wide. Again, Max Johnson getting an opportunity. Shot to the far side boards. Innebeck through the middle. Shot. That one will be blocked up in the air off the blocker. And a pretty good chance on the near side. Pass a little too far ahead for Schmidt. Lakeville North just blasting from every angle. And he moves it. Point shot. That's going to be blocked out deep. Played by Graham back through center. A lot of black shots because teams are just trying to drive it to the net from deep along the blue line. Sent back in another turnover. Snuggerud looking up ice. Snuggerud wants the red. Gains it. Sends it back in. Ottinger holds it up behind the net. Neely had gone by the puck. Graham, Michael Graham, 16, will control it. Graham looking to the middle. Spinner cutting there. Spinner trying to tip. Spinner's got a long reach on that stick. Spinner got knocked down, being held, trying to get back up to the front of the net. He does. And uh, just trying to bang it out here. Lakeville trying to gain a little room, and they do. Chu played it back. Spinner was the intended. Intercepted again. Altavilla sends it in. Spinner's a guy that's strong on a stick. You saw him in front of that net, boy. Even though there's traffic, he finds a way to get that blade on the puck. No scoring here in the third period with the game tied at 4-4. At one point, Eden Prairie had a two-goal lead in this game. Lakeville came back to tie it up. Now both teams defensively minded. In. That's going to go wide. Big time rush put on again as they find a little ground here. Teams trying to make quick line changes and trying to keep fresh legs out there on both sides. Lots on the far side. Didn't get it out. Target Singer held it in. Shot. <laughs> Missing on the short side. We've got shots coming from the side. It's like playing pinball. And deep rebounds off the wall. And it's moved out of the zone. Good play by Hyden to get it out of there. Back on D, Mark Sullivan. Sullivan swings it out, and no icing. Said it was touched on the way by through center. So it'll keep that clock running at 327. Up on the four check. Keeley, good job. Handled again. Sadik behind the net. Sadik bounces it to the point. Not out. Held in Aguilar. Let's try it again. Back to the near side. Keeley again is right there. He'll send it right back behind the net. It put on by Argett Singer, trying to hold it up. Mm. Almost loose side of the net and almost stolen by Keeley again. And Keeley did create the steal. Boy, he was persistent on that. It was a good move by Mac Johnson. He thought he's away. Next thing you know, Keeley just coming after him. You can just feel the crowd moving to the edge of their seats with each tick of the clock here because right now one will win it. And our game summary brought to you by Tria Orthopedic Center, bringing innovation to patient care for extraordinary results. And what jumps out at you at that game summary is he got Spinner with two goals in 1920 ice time. The leader on that team offense and the leader of offense of Lakeville North, Jake Paling with two assists, 1923 ice time. Goals also by two defensemen for Lakeville North. They're scoring from the outside. And there's Spinner urging his team on. And with the break, each team will be able to get their first lines back out on the ice. Snuggerud continuing to play despite having that hand bashed a little bit. Jack Paling's had some opportunities in this game. Now who's going to get the one that sends you to the championship game tomorrow night? Spinner again will move in on the faceoff. Ryan Paling won the draw. Paling moved it around. Jack Paling got it out of there but can't control it. Shoe back, shoe at Snuggerud. An enormous amount of ice time tonight for these 2D. And they've been involved in the offense as well as playing defense. Ice it. 
And it just seems like uh, Eden Prairie's pace has slowed down a little. They're not as quick to get to the pucks as they were earlier, and they're not being as physical as they were earlier. Lakeville North has sort of set the tempo for this period. Ever since they tied the game, they've got their legs moving more than Eden Prairie. Eden Prairie's got to get back to that game they had earlier in the first period and first half of the second when they seem to be all over the ice. Jack Paling on the faceoff loses it this time as it'll be moved back out the center. Spinner won the draw, tried to chase it down. Off the boards, Graham, Spinner the trailer, Graham in. Graham, chance, shot, blocker save, bounces all the way. Spinner on the stick to the point, shot, Snuggerud, that goes off the D. Shot, that's deflected out as Shoe had the opportunity. Now Lakeville, boy, well, couldn't clear. Shot and a save made off the pad on a second chance for Michael Graham. Not out again. Shoe shot. That will go over the head of Ottinger. Cleared back in by Spinner behind the net, trying to get to the front. Shot. That goes off the side of the net. Graham with the opportunity. Lakeville now just get this out of here, and that's what they do with the flip. Well, a lot of pressure there by Eden Prairie. Eden Prairie's playing like they did against Benilde in the regional uh, finals. They got down late in the game, and they played under pressure. They've held that pressure of a double overtime. They have been in this situation before, and they're playing like it right now. That'll be backed up over the glass. Only 136 to go. Mm. Tie game, shots tied 19-19, uh, score tied 4-4. It couldn't be any more tighter than this, and as you said... Right now, the next goal is going to be the winner, so they better play to win, not play and not to lose. First period was a big offensive period. Sadik, Spinner, Altavilla, Spinner again, and uh, plays all had goals in the first, a 3-2 lead uh, for Eden Prairie. They upped it to 4-2 in the second period on a Parrish goal. But battling right back to tie this thing up at 4-4, Eslett and Nick Paling to tie it up. Now, here in the third period, it's been about not losing almost more than winning. And I don't say that negatively. It's just that nobody wants to make a mistake out there that costs his team. So they've played a, both teams have played relatively safe hockey. Healy dumps it in, one waiting for the other team to make a mistake. One minute. one minute left to go in this semifinal. Cleared a long way up ice by Sadik. It'll go out and we'll get a whistle. Let's take a look at our save of the game brought to you by Catholic United Financial Life Insurance. Annuities and retirement products. There's Jack Paling stealing the puck and he goes down all alone. The number one point getter makes the shot, but the goaltending of Gerties was enough to beat him and keep this game tied. Great save. Gerties is save of the game right there. No question about that one. Brian Paling on the draw again against Spinner. Spinner takes almost all these faceoffs and has done exceedingly well in both games last night and tonight. Snugger Road will send it into the corner. Graham had it, lost it. 40 seconds to go. The rush up ice. Jack Paling trying to be part of a game winner. Centering pass got blocked. Roll back to the line. Here's a three on three. Got broken up as the puck stuck. Brought back in. Snuggerud leaves it. Here's the man they want to shoot. Graham's got it. Graham looking to go back out in front. 21 seconds left to go. Snuggerud trying to send it in. He just tried to will that through the D. Couldn't do it. Ryan Paling blocked it. Sends it off the boards for Jack Paling. Taken away by Shu. Shu trying to turn it. Couldn't do it. Back in behind the net. Get some help from Snuggerud. Two seconds left to go. And we go. The OT. Four, four, first semifinal game. And you know, Gary, we wouldn't have thought we were going to have overtime after that first period when we had five shots, or nine uh, shots, five goals. And all of a sudden, we got 19-19 right now, and it's 4-4. So we're looking for a real good shot to end this one. Each of the teams has to play their best because whoever gets the best shot is going to be going on to the championship game tomorrow night. How tough is it for goaltenders of any age in any league knowing when you get to this point of a game, if one goes by me, it's over. Not just the game over, but your season's over. And maybe your high school career over. It really yeah. tests their mettle. And that's what happens to these kids. That's why they play in pressure situations, and the good ones are able to handle it, play well with it, and move on. 
Well, in overtime games this season for uh, Lakeville, they've uh, gone 2 1 and 1 in overtime games. Eden Prairie in OT, 3 0 and 3. Eden Prairie's had quite a few of them, but they've been accustomed to them, and fortunately for them, they've been accustomed to them lately in the, in the regionals, and that, that was pressure to play a team like Benil, and actually they scored a shorthanded goal in overtime to win. But both of these clubs have quality scorers on their team, and the key is to limit their opportunities. The spinner on the faceoff again. Ryan Paling won it. Cleared into the zone. Jack coming in to get it. Jack Paling, number three in white. Tried to pin it up. Luke Snuggerud out there. In comes Nick Paling to try and dig it. Jake was able to do it himself. Or Jack rather able to do it himself. Centering pass will come all the way back to the point. Alta Villa. Trying to get it lined up. There's a sliding block made by who else? <laughs> Steven Spinner and did he get hit in the face? Boy, I'm wondering where he did get hit. Did he get hit with a follow through with the stick? I'm not so certain. We got to take a look at this because the shot's coming. Oh boy, he might have got that in the face. Maybe underneath the cage. I hope not. I hope not. He's a tough kid though, I'll tell you that. He's a competitor. Their leader, Steven Spinner, coming out to block the shot. Boy, he's, he's willing to sell out everything to make the block, and he did that there. Let's see if they take him. Yeah, they're taking him back to the locker room, mm. which I don't like. But uh, take a look here. See the shot coming? Oh, yeah, right in the side of the jaw, it looks like. Right in the side of the jaw. And boy, Alta Villa can shoot that puck, too. Mm. So Eden Prairie loses their number one player as we start this overtime. And back into the zone. Let's see how each team plays the overtime, whether they will dump and try and chase it down to create an opportunity. They'll try and move it up on the sticks. Argus Singer dropped it into the middle, returned pass to him, got deflected up and over the glass. You know, one thing for the youngsters listening, when you go to block a shot, you shouldn't fall sideways, especially when you're out by the blue line. The best way to block a shot by the blue line, never leave your feet. Go down on one knee, your upper body straight up, and that way if you're... If you're going to get hit, that puck's going to have to elevate four or five feet because you're on the knee and your body's straight up. And should you block it, there's a good opportunity for you to get a breakaway as well. Argett Singer moving it into the middle. Argett Singer still has it. His shot, that's going to be blocked. Neely was there to block it. He'll get it back, go back in behind the net. And Neely swings it around the far side. Three back at center on D for Eden Prairie now, not wanting anybody to get by. Jack Paling had it, left it off the side for Nick. That's going to go off the D stick up and onto the bench. Thus far, it's almost like they're feeling each other out. No real rushes, no real good plays. Just some long pass opportunities to see if they can break someone free. Faceoff's going to go back in the zone because it puck was shot over by the defenseman of Eden Prairie over his bench. We are in overtime. Next goal wins, and the team moves to the championship game tomorrow night. It is knocked down. And the back sent it to the side of the net. Eden Prairie will move it up the near side. They've got to make line changes. Of course, now a spinner out of there. Their leader would be double shifting. Tipped away at center. It is loose there. Comes to the near side. As it was waiting for it, couldn't get it. Bounces off Hazlitt at center off the attempted dump in by Mark Sullivan, who gets it in. A lot, of dumping. Yeah. a lot of dumping going on rather than good little passes. Whoever starts making good passes, I think, is going to win this game. Heslett had to knock that one down. Couldn't control it. Back in. Graham shot. Just rolls in. Easy save made. Ottinger. Gary's just what you said earlier. People were maybe now they're, they, want, they, they don't want to make a mistake. They're playing not to lose, and they're playing extremely tentatively, and they have to get out of that mode. They got to get into the mode where I want to be the hero. I got to make the right play. This is another game for us. Just play the way you know how to play. Make the pass. Use your feet. Get skating. You got to be sharp at this stage of the game. Graham won the draw. Snuggerud back out there. Suttery pass all alone down low. Backhander off the blocker and wide. Oh, Michael Graham, I don't think he realized he had nobody near him. Snuggerud shot, missed it, short side. Graham again trying to jam at home camp. Pace picks up all of a sudden. In the corner, Niederer 
Niederer able to dig it out. Niederer comes back to the point again. Snuggerud there. Snuggerud trying to move in on the dot. Takes a deep centering pass. Got blocked. Played by Ryan Paling up. Not out. Held in. Good job by Niederer who got back to get it. On the far side. Michael Graham drove it into the middle. His shot blocked. And sent off the glass. Jack Sadie blocked it and sent it to the boards. Intercepted again and back into the zone. Both teams need a change here. Brought up Ryan Paling. Paling trying to move in. Colton Schmidt with a great poke check right there. Back into the zone. And Lakeville will use the opportunity to get some fresh legs out on the ice. 5.08 here in this overtime period with a game tied at four. A game where Eden Prairie at one point had a two-goal lead. That'll be gloved up. Ryan Paling got it out of there. He was in his own end. Now he'll pick up his stick. Shoe came back. Shoe sends it up. There was a line change going on, so you saw Sepper go right by the puck. But they have to play it now. McNeely on the far side, trying to move it out. Plots number nine. It's pinned up by Parrish, 19 in black. Point shot, save made. Big gun. Good save made. Good down low, get a chance. Backhander got tied up. Players sprawling on the ice here. Just trying to make sure the puck does not get by him. Mike, Mark Sullivan had that great chance at the point on one that got through and a fine save by Ottinger. And now a dump and a line change. Eden Prairie looking really sharp there. They got their legs moving. They got some chances. They they were moving their feet. Niederer came in for Spinner, and he really was working down low. We'll look at an earlier chance for Eden Prairie. You see the face off there. Puck coming back. Colton Smith gives it back to Snuggerwood, and right in front, Smith gives it to Niederer. He gets that backhand shot away, and as you said earlier, Gary, right off the blocker, and that was an important save for goaltender Oninger. All these saves are game-saving saves here in the overtime. Got to clear the zone. It'll be dumped back in. McNeely sent it in. And a dangerous puck that rolled in on net was covered up. Two shots on goal in the last 21 minutes for Lakeville. 21 minutes, two shots. Yep. They had their game going for a while. They tied up the game. And they seemed to have much more puck control than they had opportunities. Even though they were controlling the puck, they were passing up shots. They got to start getting some shots on net if they're going to win this game. Eden Perry certainly is. Eden Perry's working for the good shots. Hailings pass, intercepted. Snuggerud has started back. Snuggerud in, shot, fanned on it. Right off the heel, follows it up himself. Snuggerud looking. They got a line change behind him. Fresh legs to help. All the way around, 360 shot. That one gets blocked straight up in the air and into the net. Snuggerud lugging and finally got the opportunity himself. Yeah, Eden Prairie's taking opportunities. Snuggerud got one there. They are starting to at least look like they want the puck, look like they want to get a shot, and they are taking shots when they get them. Here's a shot coming from the top of the circle. Deflected in front right over this. Off the goalie and out. Almost looked like, when you look at it, like it went off the Eden Prairie forwards uh, stick meter. And off the draw, that will be won by Ryan Paling. Cleared out by Jack to center. Snuggerud back in his own end. Pass gets blocked, stolen. Paling gets it back into the middle. A shot there, and that's going to be kicked away. Jack Paling had the opportunity on the steal from his brother. Moved back on the far side by Snuggerud. In. Niederer. Niederer lost it behind the net. Good strip play right there by Semper, who got the puck. High in the air, but not out. Now Pope checked away to center. They do clear the zone. Eden Prairie on side. Zeta came back to get it. Zeta with a four checker moving in. Again, another one of those high flips. Gets up to the blue line and is kicked out of there by Jack Paley. Paley, good job, two on one. In. Paley looking all the way, all the way around the net. No shot. Never got a shot off on it. New D coming out. Point chance will be taken. Rebound is covered and held on to. Ryan Paling moving in, trying to redirect, and Gertie's there to make the save. Good opportunity for Lakeville North, although it looked like that puck might have been bouncing a little bit, and Ryan Paling now down and hurt, but he goes all around the net. Could have passed the puck there, didn't see the passing lane open, and he gets the puck back to the point. Sadik makes a fake. And Aaron McNeely takes a shot. Watch in front. That puck was just bouncing enough that he couldn't get it as he's taken down. 
Got cross checked in the back, but he, he should be okay. Here's the opportunities. You're taking a look as the puck coming back to the blue line. When McNeely takes that shot, Paling was coming off the side all alone and got put down. And the opportunity for Lakeville, stopped by Gerties. Mm. Game still tied 2-2, looking for the next goal to send somebody to the state championship. Remember Eden Prairie here in the overtime, losing Steven Spinner, their best player, out of there with an injury and taken to the dressing room, not back on the ice. And that was in the first few seconds of the overtime. Draw one back onto the point. Alta Villa got it in front. A lot of black there to block it, though. Played in the two on three the other way. An in shot and a save made. Holding the short side post, Jack Keeley came in with a chance. Keeley was open, tried to put it in on the short side as he got around the D. That long dump will go wide. Play it again out through center. And the better chances to Eden Prairie, but they've not been able to convert. That's going to be an onside kick in right there. Margaret Singer had nowhere to go with it. Back up to the point. Fanned on the attempted in by Parrish. Parrish lost the stick, picked it back up. Argot Singer gets the puck and he led to the bench. Well, that Keeley, he looks like he likes to score overtime goals. He gave Eden Prairie a chance there with that effort, but he was stopped by Ottinger. Great play by him, though. Work back out by Snuggerud. Tipped right back out of the zone. Seeper was there to do it. Get back on side. Can't control the puck, though. Luke Seeper sent it in. Again, both teams choosing to flip the puck into the zone. This time it's going to be an icing. Yeah, we do. we are still looking for somebody to come up with a rush. A couple of passes. Like the goals we've seen each of these clubs score early in the tournament. We saw a great three-way passing play that Eden Prairie had in their opening game. The same thing for Lakeville North when the Paling brothers had one of the prettiest goals you're going to see in the tournament. That's the kind of confidence you need. That's the kind of plays you need now to get this goal. Off the draw, Graham will move in. Remember with the losses, Steven Spinner, they also lose their best faceoff man. Graham did win that, but they couldn't control it. Failing, final minute of this overtime period. Shot deflected down, save made. Rebounded to the point. That one's going to go all the way to the corner. Zeeper had the opportunity on that one. Centered again. Again, it's going to come back to the point. Final minute of this overtime period. Zeeper centered it. Went right through everybody. And picked up by Niederer. Niederer. He'll dump it in with Graham giving chase. Michael Graham. Graham looking out in front. Trying to find somebody. They'll have to go back up onto the point. Held in. They can't get the shot off. And they'll roll back out the center. Brady Shue had an opportunity over there in that far point. Now both teams will change up here, getting back on side. Shue stays out, dumps it in. Ten seconds left to go in the overtime period. Jack Paling into the middle. Can't control. And that's probably going to do it here in this first overtime period. It will. They'll just rag it back. Nobody scores in the first overtime. It remains a 4-4 game. And the way they're going, it doesn't look like anybody's going to score because we're not getting the kind of chances and goals we got in the first period. We'll have a replay here. We'll see a shot from the point that really was a heck of a bullet. It was almost deflected into the net right in front by Jack Paling, but the save was made. The puck bounced out, and we remain tied here at the end of the first overtime period as the clubs will leave the ice and will resurface and come back for 20. So stick around. We still have it determined who's going to be in the finals tomorrow night to face the winner of our next game. Dandy won in our double-A semifinal tonight. Spinner got hurt. Steve Spinner gets hurt for Eden Prairie. They almost seemed to pick up the pace after that. I think the kids rallied very well. I think the coaching staff did a good job with that and not letting the kids dwell on what they don't have, but telling them, well, this is what we have and this is what we have to do. It'll be interesting to see whether or not Steve will be able to come back. He's been a very important part of their offense and their whole game plan tonight. I was watching the bench. They kept looking back down the tunnel to see if he was coming back, but he never did come back. We'll find out here in the overtime. 
It seemed for a while Lakeville North went in spurts where they lost a little energy. They got it back towards the end. They did, and it, you know this this game is almost shift by shift. The momentum is changing. You know Lakeville North is is uh, on a roll. Their their foot shots on the net. Eden Prairie really seemed like they were in control there, Mike. Yeah. But then they get a chance with the uh, Paling Brothers. But it's been back and forth. It's been really a great great hockey game. It, and both goalies, both goalies have had some uh, great stops. I mean, they both made very nice stops. Let's take a look at some of the chances here in the overtime. Uh, been some pretty good chances both ways. Well, it's, you know, it, you get them where they couldn't make saves to begin with. And now, look at that. Right on the doorstep, Ottinger makes a great blocking save there. And it comes back the other way for Gerties. Makes a great save here on the palings as it comes across. I mean, the wraparound... Now they're playing well. They've settled in, so it may be a long time now before anybody can score, right, Dave? Yeah, that's exactly right. We know we talked about the goalies early on in the game and how they'd be a big factor. And early on, they weren't much of a factor, but certainly they've become a factor here in the game. Uh, this ninth grade goaltender from Lakeville North Ottinger, I mean, he's playing like a senior, uh, a senior in college. I mean, this kid is really playing solid, taking away the angles, playing big in the net. And you know what? His teammates from Lakeville North really count on him, and he's coming up huge. A ninth grader. I mean, do, do you think he even realizes how big a game this is? It's probably good he's only in ninth grade because he doesn't realize it, Joel. Pretty amazing stuff. Today's yeah. stats are brought to you by Polymet, working on a plan to mine the copper, nickel, and other essential metals to make this broadcast possible. Learn more at gopolymet.com. And, I mean, this thing is even. It is. The Face-offs won by Eden Ferry. Most of those were won by Steven Spinner. If he doesn't come back, that stat is going to change, and it may cost Eden Ferry in their own zone. Well, we have 20 minutes on the clock. We'll find out how long it lasts. Guys, it's going to be a great finish here. Yeah. No matter what happens, it'll be a great shot or a great play by somebody. We've got more coming up here from Overtime Hockey at the X tonight. As we've got the Edinburgh Eagles and Lakeville North Panthers are playing to a draw. We're back with more high school hockey here on 45 TV. We're trying to figure out who's going to be playing tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Both teams right now, I would imagine they're just off their feet trying to rest up because I think they were a little tired in that first oh, overtime. Oh, absolutely. But, you know, as a coach right now, these guys are in the locker room. They're 16, 17 years old. You're telling them you can't be tired. You, you know, this is something you've been waiting to, for since mid-November. you got to find the energy. A couple hours from now, you can sleep all you want. But right now, I need everything from you, every shift. Somebody is going to be a hero tonight. Somebody is going to be a legend. It's Friday night. It's the semifinal night. All great things happen here at the State Hockey Tournament. We're going to have that overtime for you right after this on 45 TV. this game I just got a text how big is this game I just got a text from Ryan Suter of the Minnesota Wild he's watching it on his iPod down in Dallas let's send it down between the benches to Tory Hall thank you Joel all right I just got out of the Eden Prairie locker room I talked to their head coach Lee Smith he gave me the update on Steve Spinner he got hit in the neck he had a hard time shaking it off as you would imagine he is going to come back and play here in this overtime period Gary Lou that should be a big lift here to the Eagles well, I'm sorry, that really matters. I mean, just the fact he's back out on the ice and obviously would not be out there if he wasn't able to play. But ooh. Well, I can tell you, he's a tough kid. And right now, if I was going to bet who's going to score the winner for <laughs> Eden Perry, it would be him. And who's going to score the winner for Lakeville North? I got to bet on their leading scorer, Jack you, Poley. You can see the mark Bailey. on his neck right there. Yeah. That's where he took that puck just underneath the side of the mask. Well, it's... You know, you almost want to say it's fortunate it's on the neck and not yeah. any of the jaw was open because that would have given him a broken jaw and then he would be in a lot worse shape right now. He certainly wouldn't be back playing. Along with all the other things, there's Snuggerud who's been uh, packed up on that bad left hand that he's gotten. Also looks like uh, maybe needs no, a little help with that right leg. Yes. Maybe the skate. No, I think his, maybe his knees bother him a yeah. little bit. He's they acting like that. But played a lot of hockey. Only one penalty has been committed in this game. One power play that Lakeville had early in the game and did, obvious, and did not convert on. And that's been it. 
this tournament, the officials in this tournament, I've been very impressed with. I think they've done a heck of a job. They do consistently. Boy, we were very lucky. And this state championship game, they let them play. They are very good and active in what they're calling. So this is the full 17-minute overtime period now. And, of course, you got the new ice down there that can make a difference. Failing, trying to move it up, could not. It'll be played hard off the boards and hit somebody on the bench and that will draw the whistle as Mark Sullivan tried to get it out. Well if you look for advantages if you look for advantages you'd have to say Eden Perry moves the puck out of their zone better more smoothly than Lakeville North and if you look for advantages on Lakeville North they have some great shooters from the blue line that seem to score goals find their way through. They each have some great forward lines we've seen that terrific balance but it's the shot that's going to make the difference. There's Spinner back on the ice. Uh, as we mentioned before, they're leading faceoff men as well. And he won that last draw and turns it back into the zone. Trying to turn the D. Can Aguilar centering pass. And he moved up. Paling's got it. Jack Paling sends it across ice. Nick into the middle. Turns. Shot. Wide. Never seen. Gertie's the goaltender. Did not know where that was, but it was not on net. Down low. Gertie's is down. And the puck goes wide. Set for Nick Paling on the near side. Gertie sprawled down on the ice. They had an empty net, but they didn't have the puck. And Lakeville, an opportunity that goes by the boards and the puck in the seats. Oh, they're going to be thinking about that one for a long time. Real good puck control by the Paling brothers. Here's Jack down low to his brother Nick across to Ryan. And just got away from Ryan. He couldn't quite put it in the empty net. There's the pass coming across just outside of Ryan's reach with a wide open net. And you see the deflated Lakeville bench after that miss. And the deflated fans behind <laughs> yeah. with the big pow. Oh. Off this draw, it'll be controlled at center. Arnold Singer trying to move it in, could not. Arnold Singer's played a very strong two games here in the state. It's uh, off the near side wall, just a little spin with it. Max Johnson trying to clear it out, cannot. Arnold Singer stole it, now it's out of the zone. And dumped back in by Lakeville. At first overtime, we saw both teams the tendency to dump the puck in, try and chase it down. Neither having a lot of success doing that. That is taken into the corner. Shu, Shu thought he got need that time. No call on it. Comes back. Argett Singer. Here's the penalty coming. Up. Now we got a penalty coming. It'll be the second one, only the second one of the game. And there's the touch. It looks like it's going to be on Lakeville. Yeah, it's going to be a slashing call. And I think he. They might have wanted to call that first one. That's what the player was complaining about. They didn't, and I think they got on the second one. Actually, they're giving it to Eden Prairie. Wow. Whoa. No, no, it is late, bro. Yeah. It is late, bro. That, that would have been surprising. <laughs> Uh -oh. I was going to say, I didn't see that about one. Good officiating there. Yeah. <laughs> Blotz is going to get it. Here's the call right here. You're going to see him right there. You get the stick up high. They did Art Singer in the head, and uh, that was all the road. There's a slash that I thought they were going to call right immediately. Yep. Watch here. That's why when you look at it, Shu got up. He's going to get up and say, what about that? And he lost his stick. Well, here's a big chance. Klotz goes two minutes slashing at 154 of the second overtime period. And now a power play opportunity. Eden Prairie, 23% effective on the power play this year. Lakeville North, 85% effective and pulling them off. Back to Spinner, back out there taking the face off, wins another one. Spinner will head to the front of the net. They'll try and find him down low. Grand from a point shot. Trying to get it through him, but not cleared out. Mark Sullivan will work one of the points. Sullivan is out there with Graham at a point. There you see Argett Singer, who will play up front. Argett Singer, Schmidt, and their leader. And the leading scorer, Spinner. That's the power play unit. Sent back in by Graham. Behind the net, there's Spinner. It's a little help. Schmidt came down, left it for him. Schmidt behind the net, spun around, good work. Sadik freed it up, comes right back to him, and uh, cleared out. Thought that might have been a hand pass. Once, yeah. once you knock it down with the hand, it's usually just blown dead immediately. Penalty killers to get two new ones out there for Lakeville. From the line, shot, relay, comes off the boards, but never made it back on net. Played up, Argett Singer working at the side of the net. Spinner back out on top. Schmidt 
They got one set up in front with a screen. Shot save. High save and cleared out of the zone. Good job by Lakeville defense down in front of that net, making certain that they were able to block that shot and get it up ice. 42 seconds of the power play. I get Singer in and a whistle behind the play. Whistle as it came back outside the zone, the offside. Well, you see Sullivan there, number 20. He had scored on a real good goal last night. Here's a shot coming that was blocked and got right down the ice. Snuggerud, number four, came off the bench immediately on the whistle trying to test that knee. He's trying to see if he can skate. Well, actually, he tried to come on before, and the referees kept him off because he had uh, already put their hand up. Lakeville gets the last call, so now he's coming back out and see how he is. He wanted to start the power play the last time, but they took a little too long to change. Now he's coming out and just warming up his knee, see how he's feeling. The uh, Snuggerud having some uh, problems, and the uh, spinner who came out in that first overtime back now. So Eden Prairie having to work through having a couple of their best players not in 100% physical condition out here. Yep. Well, Stugger looks like he's feeling fine now. He's As John Mariucci used to call him, he's doing his capers. <laughs> <laughs> his little circles back and forth. You look behind the goaltender. Look at, look at Paling down. Lean, he's actually lying down behind the bench. I, I wonder if that's Ryan that got... No, it's not. It's not Paling. Yeah. <laughs> It's Hunter. Hayden, their captain. Yeah. Hayden threw a couple of good checks in that second period. I think he's really the guy that got him started with the physical play. They had their game change a little bit, so he might have tweaked his shoulder or something, but he seems fine to go ahead, as does Snuggerud right there. Timeout used by Legville in order to rest their top-line penalty killers with 39 seconds left on the power play for Eden Prairie. Smart call by Lee Smith doing that. Snuggerud got the draw, worked back in. Schmidt, Schmidt trying to cut. Schmidt, he'll go behind the net. They look to the near side. Snuggerud onto the point. Graham, Snuggerud, two in front of the net now. They'll use the umbrella power play here. Graham, here's a shot that's deflected wide off the side of the net. It plays down there, 28 now on the power play unit. They go cross ice, Snuggerud shot, save made, rebound. In the middle, it's going to be kicked wide. Zach Clays with the opportunity. Colton Schmidt dug it out. Schmidt backing it up. Power play is over. So it's killed off by Legville. And the power play chance. Reed and Curry goes by the boards. 2-1-2 two two the other way. Shot on. That's way high. It'll come to the near side. Ian Klotzka back out on the ice out of the box and immediately had the opportunity in a 2-1-2. 12-47 two two. to go. Here in this overtime period, we are tied at four. Dumped in for the line change by Schmidt. And Joe will bring it up the near side, going with longer passes now, trying to open it up. Klotz just stripped of the puck, sent back out to center. It was Parrish who stripped him. Right back in. Neely, he lost it. Turned the other way. Johnson. Well checked away into the corner. Right on net. That'll be covered up and held on to. Well, Lakefield bounces back, kills a big penalty. Eden Prairie had some good passing, a couple of opportunities. Real good shots from outside in the point, and the rebounds that were just a little scrappy. They couldn't quite get on it. And here's the turnover. <laughs> you see Max Johnson come on the far side, and he's going to shoot the puck. Just put it right on net, hope for a rebound. Gertie's finally uh, stops it and holds it. Lays off one back onto the point. Zadik. Point shot there again by missing that deep rebound. Target singing tried to drive it in, could not. Good work along the line. Klotz couldn't get it out. Two on two down low. Shot and the save made again. Michael Parrish going for the game winner for Eden Prairie. He's had a real, real good game here tonight. Every period it seems like Parrish comes up with an opportunity. He creates one for himself here. Getting a shot from the side, hoping that if he can't get the goal himself, he gets a rebound because Arkansinger is right in front. But Ottinger holds on to it very wisely, getting a face-off down deep. Jake Ottinger in net, trying to hold the fort. Parrish will step in and take the face-off and win it. Tip back, Snuggerud along the point again. Snuggerud, a little room, got the D down. Snuggerud's going to move it in. Backhanded to the side and couldn't connect. Argett Singer was over there. Argett Singer will get the puck. Argett Singer shot. That goes near side. Again, off the boards, deep. Handled at the half boards. Parrish 
The other side shot, and that's going to go straight through and held on to by Oniger. Well, pressure continues from Eden Prairie. They're getting shots on net, and that's what you have to do. you got to get some opportunities. You see Shu going off right now after he takes a shot, and you see it right from the side. Shu's going to come in, put that shot right on net. Again, you hope for a deflection, you hope for a rebound, or you hope that it goes right in. And the deflection was attempted in front of net, just wasn't done. Heck of a game to decide this first semifinal match. That one's going to go wide. It'll be bounced out of the zone. Spinner, Steven Spinner, back out on the ice now. Spinner's up with the forecheck, held behind the net. Eden Prairie with a 4-1 edge and shots on goal here in the overtime. Another turnover was handled by Spinner. Got it in front. Shot saved with a pad. Rebound setting on the line, and it'll be kicked wide. Michael Graham with a charge. Came right through the blue that time. And the puck will end up on the Lakeville bench. Wow. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Eden Prairie continuing to pressure. Now shooting Lakeville 30 to 23. As you see right in front, Graham looks like he's got a real opportunity here. Just the save is made by Oninger. A fine chance, a great opportunity. Excellent effort by Graham. But Oninger beats him in a still tie. Hanging onto that post, refusing to let go of it. Saber shoots that one in. Sullivan back to get it. Clears it right back out. Sadik will come back. Sadik working with their unsung hero, according to their coach. That is Luke Sepper wearing number 22 in white. Intercepted and dumped back into the zone by Clays that time, or at least he tried. Here's Johnson again. Johnson had a poke checked away. Big hit along the blue line. No call on it, though, and another player down on the ice. That's going to be Henry Annabeck. He's going to the bench under his own power, but very slowly. And Lakeville will get the line change, and Annabeck's on the bench. Aguilera came back to get it. Aguilera drops it off. Shoe. Shoe. Up. Not out. Let's hold it in, and it's covered. In the paint, it is held on to by Gerdes. What a save right there. I'll tell you, that shot was coming from the side and deflected by Rohrbeck right in front. And look at the coach. <laughs> He's wondering about no call earlier, but watch this play right here. You see the shot coming right in front. That puck gets deflected and stopped. Best chance for Lakeville thus far. Quite chance. That one missed wide. That one went all the way through the screen from the top of the circle. Not a big chance for Hyden that time. Both coaches trying to get some legs out there who haven't played a lot in this game. Let's check in with Tori. Gary, Gary looks Snuggerwood's down here. He's getting attended to by Gary Smith, the athletic trainer. He looks like he's having cramps down here, and he's down in the tunnel area. So right now uh, they're without him on the ice. Boy. Well, they lost Binner for a whole period. Now they lose Snuggerwood. They Two have to really men. persevere tonight, they're, and yet they're persevering. They've had some chances. Still have had the better chances here in the overtime. Argetsinger starts it up again. Argetsinger the move into the middle. Puck ran ahead of him, though. Played there by Altavilla. Moved it off the side. And they'll go D to D to the back to try and move it out. Altavilla trying to find a little help here. Parrish up with a forecheck. Slip, uh, gonna get a Ooh. slashing call. A slight delay penalty. call. Slashing penalty. It'll be rolled in wide, covered up, and a power play is coming for Lakeville. As going off is Jack McNeely for Lakeville holding on to his arm. Yeah, and he uh, he looks like he's hurting too, by the way. I don't know if he's going to be coming back too fast, but Lakeville now with an opportunity in the power play after Arkansinger slashes McNeely down in the corner. And Lakeville, which thus far in the overtime, Gary has really been missing the net a lot. Watch right here. It's going to be coming up right now. Chance for the game winner on the power play. Their second power play chance of the game. And only the third penalty we've had. Argett Singer at 726 of the overtime on the slash. Early face off. The first one won by Eden Curry. And it'll be sent out the length of the ice. I remind you, Eden Curry advanced to the state championship by scoring on a penalty. They were shorthanded in the overtime against Benil. They've scored seven shorthanded goals. Eden Prairie has. Power play. Get the brothers back out on the ice. Paling dropped it off. Working to the point. Brian Paling. Point chance taken. Blocked with the defenseman stick. 
on the chance, but they cannot clear the zone. Paling in the far side's got a lot of room. He'll go to the dot, but he's got to turn it back out. Paling looking. Leaves it here, Sadik. Sadik really wanted to set it up the side of the net. Couldn't connect on the pass. It'll be cleared up. Great hold. Sadik able to hold it in. Tremendous job along the blue line. Annabeck is playing on the half wall here. Annabeck with a minute eight left on this power play. Next goal wins. Sadik to him. Annabeck shot. That got blocked in front. Rebound! senior captain as he had two goals in the game but in the end it would be Nick Paling scoring his 14th and his second of this tournament as he picked up the goal that came to tie it up at 16 24 of the second period he tied it with a goal and now wins it with a goal in overtime well and Gary what you said earlier during the power play was really the key to winning the game those keep-ins by Sadek were unbelievable some of them right you thought for sure that buck was out of the zone it wasn't and we're going to look again here at the play of the game and that was the key in getting the winning goal it looked like Eden Prairie was getting the puck out of the zone two three times it didn't happen when it doesn't happen then you get the eventual thing or the winning goal by Nick Palin here and our play of the game brought to you by CCM start your legend with CCM hockey and here's a shot from Weir coming right off end of Beck it gets deflected and coming out of the corner, Ryan Paling. Sadik to Ennebeck, deflection. N Nick Paling, no mistake, game over. And the assist will go to Sullivan and Sadik, the game winner in a very tight game that saw Lakeville come from a two goal deficit. Well, to win this in overtime. We're going to have to change that assist because it was Ennebeck that took the shot and got deflected. And Paling. Got the resulting free puck right past the goaltender and Lakeville North, a happy group, getting to the finals. Here's our player of the game. It's brought to you by CCM. Start your legend, with CCM Hunt. I don't think we have to wonder who it's going to be. Mick Paling with a fantastic shot to beat goaltender Gerdes and propel Lakeville North to tomorrow night's state high school championship. A tremendous effort by both of these teams, certainly worthy of the accolades that will go to the uh, teams that make it to the semifinals. Lakeville was the favored team here. The number two seed coming in against Eden Prairie was seeded number three in this tournament. And a tremendous finish before a full house here at the XL Energy Center for this game. Fans who were coming for the second game obviously arrived to see a lot of hockey from the first game with the first the eight minute overtime and then the uh, second overtime. Well and you you have to give credit to Eden Prairie. They outshot Lakeville 30 to 25. They really played a great game. They lost their two star players for long periods of time especially Spinner going out over a period who was having a phenomenal night and yet they kept battling kept in there and just the offensive ability of Lakeville North. And Torres. To Torres was someone who's got a big smile on his face. Yeah, hero of the game, Nick Paling. Well, I got to ask you about the goal. Take me through it as Jack Stadick makes the big keep at the line to keep you in on the power play. Take me through the goal as you put in the game winner. I mean, to be honest, I don't, I don't even really know what happened. I just know Stadick had a great play at the blue line and 
puck was right there for me and I just pounded it in. For a lot of people, they never get to compete in something like this in front of this many people in a tournament of this magnitude. Yeah. What was it like battling a team like Eden Prairie to a chance to go to the championship? That's awesome. I mean, we never thought that we'd be in this position. and. To have this many people here and being overtime is one of the greatest experiences I'll ever have. How much does this mean to you to be able to represent Lakeville as a community that's never had a team in the state championship for hockey? This means everything. I mean, that was our goal at the beginning, trying to get to the championship, and finally did it. Nick, congratulations, and uh, go find that puck and keep it for a long time. Thank you. All right, that's Nick Paling, Gary. Well, they won 2-1 to one in their game against Rosso, which was a very tough game last night. Come back in this one, have to win it in overtime. Yet another one-goal game, and they continue their spectacular season. Congratulations to Eden Prairie for a tremendous year and a great semifinal game here. And to Lakeville North, congratulations on the win. We'll have an opportunity to see them again tomorrow night in the championship game. Now the question is, who is it that they are going to play? That will be decided coming up in our second game here tonight. But this one is now in the history books. A overtime 5-4 win. Haley with a game-winning goal. For me, by far, right? They, no question, they, 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 no it question. Great, it was a great game. I think the kids, but both teams competed very hard. Uh, Eden Prairie, it's a very difficult loss to swallow. Lakeville, my hat's off to you for playing, coming back in a game that was you faced adversity. And uh, I, I was just, I can't say enough good things about that game. It had every part of drama. Uh, every up and down you could have in a hockey it, game. It certainly was. And, you know, one of the things I thought, guys, was the difference midway through the second period. We talk about a little bit dealing with adversity. Things weren't going well for Lakeville North. Down 4-2. They had the power play. Unable to score in the power play. They could have got real discouraged. Come back. Two late goals tied up. That was a big part of the game. Yeah. No question. You know, it was interesting because on that power play, I'm sitting next to the professor, and he said, they can't get it out of the zone. They're going to score. And they did. Right. One of the things, and you're killing a penalty any part of the game, Game doesn't make any difference overtime regular time is you cannot miss a clear when you have the opportunity to get the puck out of the zone you have to get it out of the zone Sadik was able to hold it in there and a bad clear uh, and that cost them the game well and, and that's that's just it that's why as coaches you practice the power play too because you know how important special teams are here and they took advantage they got that one big power play in the overtime they took advantage of it Nick Paling had the tying goal to tie the game at four and he ends up having the game-winning goal in double overtime and they will be advancing to their first championship but I tell you what you do have to give Eden Prairie a lot of credit because they lost their two top players at different times during the game right as David alluded to the uh, adversity of face while well, Eden Prairie adver faced adversity and they stared it down those kids have nothing to hang their head about that coach Lee Smith I know is telling them that it's stinging right now but years from now you'll look back on that and you'll say see how hard you compete under adverse conditions when your best players were down the team rose to the occasion today's stats are brought to you by polymet working on a plan to mine the copper nickel and other essential metals that make this broadcast possible learn more at gopolymet.com and uh, it was a close one it really was and you know it, it, what it made me think of as i watched this battle you know the couple of eden prairie kids down they, they it, it was amazing to see. If you, you, all you young kids out there, if you want to know how tough it is to get to a state title game in the state of Minnesota, ask these two teams. These guys left it all on the ice tonight. It was really fun to watch, and hats off to both teams. It was. I mean, they played the body. They dove in front of pucks. They took their lumps. They went to get hit to make a play to move the puck to a partner or whatever it was. This was a classic game of how you play hockey. How, what you have to expend in energy and fearlessness. We've had a dandy one so far. We've got one more to come. You know, Ben Franklin could be in this building right now. He wouldn't need a kite and he wouldn't need a key because this place is electric as we get ready for the second game with a doubleheader. We've got one team going to Motor State Championship, Lakeville North. Who will it be next? We will have that game coming up as it's a battle of the E's. Egan and Edina on 45 TV.